Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Sewing Street. I hope everybody is well this morning. Gosh, was it icy? Is it icy where you are? We all had to scrape the ice this morning. That is not fun before uh, at half past five in the morning, but it is, it's lovely to have your company. Stay nice and warm. I know that we're all in the same sort of strange boat at the minute, aren't we? All this uncertainty, but um, one thing I'm certain of is that we're going to have a brilliant day today. We've got a great show. It's jam-packed and we're going to make sure that everybody is kitted out with plenty to do over the next month. We're officially in our little bubble, by the way. I've got Elliot and Kat who are going to be sick of me by December because we're, um, we're together for the whole time. I'm on Facebook Live, by the way, and this is hilarious because John Scott said hello this morning to me. So I put he's my friend obviously hello john and he's uh, so i put morning john and i forgot that it comes up as sewing street not my name so then everybody is saying morning john morning john good morning john i'm sorry that it's me today i'm covering for john he's back with you on friday and saturday but anyway um it is lovely lovely to have your company today come in and say hello on facebook oh thanks lorraine she says morning lovely vicky good morning maggie come and say hello to me as we are live on facebook youtube we're also obviously live on Freeview and Sky this morning and on our app which is fabulous. Now the early bird special I'll tell you what's coming up throughout the day just after the early bird but this is my favorite early bird of the month this well I say the month we're only the second or something aren't we the third this is my favorite early bird of the, the, the all of October and November this is absolutely awesome it's one of my favorite charm packs from Lewis and Irene it's absolutely adorable so it's all of your um, world animals and they're five inch charm squares. They are beautiful. We've seen this, I've only seen this once before. It was with lovely Sarah Bolam and we had, um, we, we did this lovely quilt, which I'll show you in a second, but just look at how adorable these are. And it's not the same as just having just any animals. I mean, look at this. You've got your panda, you've got your tiger, you've got a crocodile. What's this one? No, it's not. Come on in closer. It's not a koala. It's something else. Hannah and Hannah knew what it was. Message in. Message in. Oh, Jill saying morning, Vicky and the bubble team. Wendy, morning, lovely lady. Very happy to see you this morning. Oh, thanks, Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. No ice in Cornwall this morning. Oh, that's good. No ice in Cornwall. Oh, there's ice here in Redditch. There is ice here. There is ice. Oh, look, because there's the, um, oh, no, that's a sloth. You've got a sloth, you've got a llama, a cheetah. So they're all sort of uh, a toucan, so they're all different kind of animals as well. There's your koala and your bear, your kangaroos. They're all gorgeous, rainforest. You've also got, what's this? This reminds me of going to Warwick Castle. Is it an eagle? But they've also then got all of your mixer fabrics as well. So you've got bubble berry. You've got your lovely Lewis and Irene prints. They are stunning. We were talking yesterday about fussy cutting. And this is a perfect, perfect fabric to fussy cut, isn't it? You're getting all of these squares for $12.99. It is a very, very special price. Look at this lovely blue. Both of these lovely blues. They're gorgeous. Oh, look. I've never seen a fabric with a... Um, Platypus on before. <laughs> How amazing is this? You got a platypus. Loads of these have gone into um into baskets. No, Alice, let me show you the difference. It is not a koala. <laughs> it looks like a koala. So there's a koala. This one is. What's that? That's our koala. Begins with a C, Elliot's saying. Oh, come and, mess come and message in. Um, oh, Paula says, good morning, loving the show this morning. Thank you for your bright good morning. I've fallen asleep holding my cup of tea and luckily you woke me up just before I spilled it over the bed. Wake up, Jackie, wake up. Good morning, Maria. We saw, um, we went to get a, a breakfast sandwich for the last time. This is, we can't make this into a regular occurrence, our bubble, because we all had a breakfast this morning. Although I can't tell, um, yeah, we'll just be piling on the pounds in this lockdown, I think. Um, but anyway, we went to the sandwich place and there was a man in there in his slippers and still all in all his cozies. And we thought, gosh, come on, wake up, wake up. But it was still only about quarter past seven. Um, morning, Vicky Maria. Hello, Val. 
Did you say you were on Freeview? Yes, 74. 74, Val. We're on Freeview 74. Margaret, uh, good morning. Good morning, Margaret. Good lo looking forward to the show today. We've got Jules Mayouf today. Angela says I'm the best. Is John still watching? Thanks, Angela. Thank you, Angela. Yeah, Freeview 74. I love how everybody sort of interacts with each other. Nobody's messaged in yet with the right answer for the... Um, it's not a competition. We don't know. Atasia. Oh, Google it. Atasia. I love these fabrics. You're getting so many. 42 five-inch squares. Oh, it could be Atasia. Atasia. It's not a sloth, Margaret. There are sloths on here, though, look. Hang on, let me find the sloth one. Look. A bush baby! Yes, that's it, Karen. I think it's... And Maggie said a bush baby. Yes, I think you're, you're right. That's what I... Re that was the one I was thinking. There's the sloth, Margaret. Morning, Tracy. Can I show you what uh, Sarah's made, though, with this? Um, just making them into these really lovely sort of petal shapes. It looks beautiful. We have a tool for that, the trim tool for this. Um, it's £12.99 for that whole charm pack. And it works so, so well just with using, you know, a metre and a half or so or a metre of, uh, of your background fabric. And it's just simple sort of quilting on it and it looks so effective then having it using your scrappy binding I love 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 this we are making sure that every single one of these sells out this morning it is your early bird special from Lewis and Irene what I love about Lewis and Irene is that they are a family business and um, I think you can really really tell that three generations of families have been putting together these beautiful fabrics and there's so much love and attention that goes into it but I think for a children's play mat it's really educational as well it's really fun I mean we're learning this morning aren't we we're learning morning Tracy Lovely little storage boxes, little purses, little patchwork projects. There's so much that you can do with a five inch square. In fact, those of you that have got any of um, uh, the pre-cut books, there's quite a few different pre-cut books that we have. They're really, really popular. Uh, it's a popular pre-cut to have your five inch square. So there's so much that you're going to be able to do. But I do love the fact of even just having, you know, your scrappy binding and, uh, and a quilt like this. But you're getting so, so much for your money, bearing in mind you're getting 42 of these squares with little zebras, oh my word I hadn't noticed see in the background as well you've got the zebras and you've also got the little paw prints that is adorable, you've got your big mane they are amazing aren't they it's not just the run of the mill sort of animals that you gen generally see on fabrics the run of the mill animals but do you know what I mean the ones that you um you s the the more generic animals that you tend to see on more fabrics this is something a bit different um lots of learning this morning Kat's saying Maureen oh so Elliot did pick this up and I chose not to say it because I wasn't sure but go on <laughs> So Elliot also agreed they're each square, and who is this who messaged in, sorry? Ma Maureen. Maureen said that each square representing animals from different continents. So you could do, oh, what about doing a world map? What about like a map um, and having the animals on each continent um, using the, the fabric to sort of fussy cut into the shape of the country? That would be amazing, Maureen. Is it a lima? Let's, is there a lima on here? There's a lima, isn't it? No. That's a alpaca, or it could be a, no a llama, llama not a lima. <laughs> um, what are lemurs look? What do lemurs look like? I love the cheetahs as well. You could fussy cut these for English paper piecing. <gasps> Hang on. Oh yes, the one with the big stripy tails. What's this one? An anteater, or an aardvark? I've not seen an aardvark on a fabric before. That's so cool. I absolutely love it. What about doing like um, story time, uh, reading corner cushions? These would be absolutely brilliant. I love that. Oh, thank you, Maureen. Thank you for your messages. Come on in and say hello. They're absolutely adorable. Look. Hi, Eileen. This is obviously Australia. I can guess this continent. Come on, let's guess the continent. What's this one then with your cheetah and your toucan? Co it's still got a sloth. It's got a sloth. It's got to leave it. Right, this is actually a hard one with an anteater as well. What's the continent, everyone on Facebook? Message in. Hello, good morning, Eileen. 
Brazil? No, Brazil. Right, Elliot's guess is Brazil. What's your guess, Kat? Right, we need to get our heads back into the quizzing mode because I'm going to do my first lockdown quiz again on Friday. I got very addicted to it back in April. I did one virtually every single day. I wrote a quiz to, to do on Zoom. So I'm going to start it again. Here we go. An armadillo. Where's the armadillo? <laughs> Cat's now singing, Tony Christie, is this the way to Amarillo in my ear? My claim to fame is that I uh, met Tony Christie once, yes. He lives in Litchfield, he lives not far from here. The armadillo is the one with the white back. I'm holding it. Anteater. An aardvark, it's an armadillo. There you go, it's an armadillo. Um, we don't know what continent this is still. Right, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. Mm, South, oh, South America, the llama. South America, that's what Maureen said. South America, Brazil, yeah, you did get the correct-ish. <laughs> um, Africa. There's nothing stopping you buying multiple, by the way. There's nothing stopping you buying multiples. You can absolutely stock up on these. It's only £12.99 for your early bird special today, and you're getting 42 charm squares. What's this one? Where'd you get alligators or crocodiles? Pandas. Oh, it's got to be... Um, is it Japan? Oh. Is it China? China or Asia? Asia with the tigers, Maureen. You're good at this game. Maureen, Maureen, I'll go complete with, with what you're saying here. Um, Maureen, do you want to be on my quiz team? You're very good at this game. I, I mean, I haven't even scratched the surface. I'm not going to go through them all because you get um, all of these same sort of prints with different colourways. But 42 squares, there's loads. The kangaroo with a little joey in his pouch. So cute. Her pouch, I should say. Right, do we know this one? I'm guessing Canada. What's this then? A wolf. A wolf. A beaver. A moose. A beaver. A beaver. A bear. An eagle. They're so cool, aren't they? Oh, thank you ever so much, Maureen. She's going to be on my quiz team. Asia with the Tigers. Just gone to um, 74 and it's showing jewellery, Val. Um, um, well, try, I think you might be on 73. Try, try the next channel up, Val. We might need to retune your telly, maybe. But we are definitely Freeview. It should say Shopping Quarter as the, the channel name. We will be there on channel 74. But these are all amazing, aren't they? Absolutely brilliant. Right, okay. Everybody checks out their baskets. It's completely sold out. Just wanted to make sure that they all sell out. They're absolutely awesome, aren't they? We're thinking of loads of different projects that we're going to be doing. This one's quite um, Christmassy, actually. Love that. Who's that again, sorry? Hi, Nova. Nova's back with us. Oh, I'm pleased that you're able to watch us. I know that it's a, a real strange, strange time, isn't it? But it's, um, we'll keep you entertained. I promise we will keep you entertained all month. Uh, we're all still going to be here, so don't you worry. Do make sure you join us. Don't forget, today, we're also doing the second show of Larn, Yarn Lane later on. So Bex Reed is going to be here from 12 to 1. Well, I say here... It's a different show. It's a different show. It is filmed here, but it's a different show. But it, from 12 to 1, it will be ded dedicated, dedicated show to knitting and crochet. And um, Bex has got all the tools to get you kitted out and started and get you all sorted, ready for lockdown. We're over-allocated on the, on the early bird. If you've got them in your basket, now is the time to check out. We had so many of those, but we do need to see confirmation as soon as possible. But that looks amazing, doesn't it? Have I got to fold all these and put them all back in the right, or in the right order? I've <laughs> got to put them all back in the right order. Right. Can I show you, coming up, later on at 11 o'clock, it's not on pre-order yet, but it is a brand new book of everyday embroidery for modern stitches, and there's such cool hand-sewing motifs in here. I absolutely love it. It's coming up with Jules later on. There's some really, really, really beautiful 
um, embroidery ideas in here and making embroidery wearable, doing little mini projects, things that you can do quite quickly, cards for people, I love that. There's so many cool designs. We're back to, you know, having more time on our hands again and if you're thinking, right, I just want to do a bit of slow stitching in front of the television or, or I tell you what, later on when it gets to the point where you think right I've watched Sewing Street I just want to turn the TV off and just sit and do some put a podcast on or something and just do some stitching then uh, this is a really lovely sort of mindfulness book I think I love that so stay tuned that's coming up at 11 o'clock well I'll let you know when it goes on pre-order the early bird is about to sell out by the way well done everybody who manages to get it so today's show looks a little bit like this eight o'clock we've got perfect pre-cuts and books so we're going to um, give you some inspiration how to use your charm squares uh, we've also got at nine o'clock Jules my youth joining me with our crystal strips stripes quilt strips quilt which I'll show you in just a second it's going to be behind me ten o'clock we're going to be talking more about creative grids yesterday we did um, um, touch on creative grids for for um, for some time we've got three brand new books that will coincide with your stripologies. So if you've already got a stripology, stay tuned. Also, breaking news, the XL is back in stock. It will go live on the website at 10 o'clock, so do make sure you're there. If you're um, not quite sure what we're talking about, if you're like Elliot and say, hang on, this is a different show, stripology, you wanted to demo the stripology. Um, yeah, we'll show everybody um, exactly what it is at 10 o'clock. So do make sure you come back and oh, stay with us. 11 o'clock, Jules is going to be joining me again. And we've got the most adorable apron where we're going to be talking more about that book um, that I've just briefly shown you. So this is what the apron looks like. That is lovely, isn't it? And I, I just love using, you know, vibrant colours, some of your favourite um, threads to do that gorgeous, gorgeous hand stitching. And I think lots of us are thinking more about potentially, you know, making items for Christmas this year for gifts. Um, it's, it's, it's a strange time, isn't it? And Kat, Kat's actually putting together a bit of a gifts idea for people, a uh, gift show idea for people for tomorrow. So uh, if you are thinking, I'm not going to have a chance potentially to do some of the shopping that I wanted to do. We've got some great sewing related gifts coming up tomorrow. So do make sure you watch tomorrow as well. Um, 12 o'clock, of course. Stay tuned. If you are watching on the web, you'll need to make sure that you go to yarnlane.com um, for, of course, an hour of Yarn Lane, all the gadgets and gizmos for, uh, for, for Bex with Rebecca Reed. So Elliot yesterday asked me would I do a, a recording for the adverts, a voiceover. And I started doing it and he says, oh, can you just sort of go up on .com? So it sounds less like .com. Yarnlane.com, I thought was quite sort of sharp and punchy. And he says, no, we well, just say it with more sort of happiness, with more up. So then I was like, yarnlane.com, <laughs> trying to sing it. So yeah, look out for that in the advert because it'd be funny. Um, right, we've put everything on pre-order this hour. And in fact, the quilt kit that's behind me is also on pre-order. If you want to grab it, it is on pre-order. So this is how you do it. If you go to our website, in fact, I'll show you also how you can message in. If you click on watch live, uh, then on the right hand side you'll see the early bird, it's about to sell out. Underneath you can see a box where it says message the studio. Send in any messages to myself and my bubble, Kat and Elliot, come in and say hello. Hello bubble team. Uh, send in your messages and of course uh, we can read them out on air. If you scroll down, you'll see the best sellers, you'll see, you'll see the, uh, the product show deals, and then on the right hand side where Kat has clicked, you can see it says pre-order. Now that's everything from today's show. Once we've aired them, they will appear on the products um, from today's show. So they'll appear on the left hand side, but these are all on pre-order. There's your quilt kits. There's your quilt kits, it's a gorgeous Annie's quilting book. We've got some great tools there as well. So if you do want to stock up on any of them. Plus, if you're purchasing anything today, if you've bought the early bird already, you'll only pay one postage and packaging all day long. Now, that is of course a way of getting in touch with us. If you want to send us an email or get in touch on Facebook, then you can do it via our email address, which is studio at sewingstreet.com. Studio at sewingstreet.com. 
and also on Facebook, it's Sewing Street TV. We are live on Facebook and YouTube, so come on in and say hello. Um, oh, there you go. Watch us on Freeview 74, Val, uh, Sky 670, or of course on YouTube, just search Sewing Street TV. Got any questions that you can't find on the web? Of course, the customer service team are always there. 0800 001 4433. You can shop with us there as well. Right, shall we start with a book? Shall we do a project book? Um, we've got 15 blocks to mix and match. Now, yesterday we did a whole show based on fussy cutting and the early bird special is going to be absolutely perfect for this book. Um, it means that you can really sort of isolate and focus the eye into certain points of, of your block. So in this one that's on the front, for example, you could have your animal prints on the central block and then use coordinating fabrics from your stash. It's going to look amazing. So it's the first time I've seen this book, actually. This is your playful pre-cut quilts. There's a what? There's a cat block. Oh, let's have a look. Scrappy hearts, vintage treasures, Newport Beach. Oh, this is lovely. So if you scroll, uh, scroll, flick through, gosh, that's so strange, isn't it? Do you know, I, do you know what I did the other day? This is so bad. This is really strange. I was reading a magazine and went like this to try and zoom in like I do on my iPad. I was like, oh my word, what has happened to me? That is weird, isn't it? And I've just said you scroll through the book like I'm on the, on the tablet. <gasps> That's scary. So it talks to you about pre-cuts, the world of technology. What's it doing to us? Um, pre-cut squares. So we've been obviously talking about the, the uh, five inch squares today as our early bird, but also breaking down what are fat eighths, what are fat quarters, what size are they? Um, so they are all broken down at the front. You're quilting basics, uh, you're finishing basting and quilting, binding, and then it goes into all of your projects, which these are beautiful. Oh, there, look, you've got a cat block. So you could just put that onto a cushion, couldn't you? Or you could just put that onto a bag. You don't necessarily need to do the whole quilt block. When Wendy Orlando taught me this, she was saying, look, quilting, um, Quilting books are brilliant, but don't just think that you've got those 15 projects and don't just think, you know, that that's the only thing that you can make. You've got all of these great blocks to use for other projects indeed. I love it. Use the patterns however you wish, but all of your instructions are very, very clear. So there's your cat block. And that looks lovely and simple. Finishing, it's all very detailed with lovely photographs and diagrams. Now this one's using fat quarters. So if you've got any lovely fat quarters uh, packs in your stash, if not, don't worry, we've got some coming up. These are made with 10 inch squares. Maybe some of the CAFE uh, layer cakes or the, the, the 10 inch charm packs from yesterday. Hi Glenis, how are you this morning? Lots of people tuning in on Facebook. Come and say hello, come and say hello. Scrappy hearts. See, that is beautiful, isn't it? And in different colourways, that's going to look incredible. So this one is actually from your five-inch um, pre-cut squares. So you, if somebody you know loves animals, you could use your early bird charm pack and make a beautiful... It's gone now. It's sold out. You've got your um, scrappy hearts and could do um, a really lovely animal quilt, couldn't you? Well, I don't know if you got the early bird, by the way. It's busy, busy, busy already this morning. Um, there's your layout diagram. Sunday, uh, Sunday drive. I think that's a good one to fussy cut, actually, because you could put like a really beautiful uh, fabric from yesterday, maybe. Uh, any of the ones that we picked out for fussy cutting, you could put them in there. You've also got your gingham patches. We've got some lovely ginghams in, but I mean, I mean, it will look completely different with other fabrics as well. There's not, there's nothing to say that you have to use these fabrics. It just gives us a bit of inspiration, and I think maybe after the last, uh, you know, the start of the year, we might have done lots of different sewings and uh, sewing and exhausted lots of our ideas and our fabrics and and our books, our inspiration, and you lose your sojo. And if you're thinking right. I'm ready to get back on the horse and start again and do some lovely, lovely projects. And whether it be Christmas projects or whether it be thinking ahead for spring and, and summer next year, you could just do some really, really lovely sewing. That one's gorgeous. That's your Newport Beach, your flower basket. £22.99. The patterns 
are really comprehensive as well. You've got great thorough instructions. You've got really good cutting instructions. Um, it goes through all the tips of how to do your sashing, how to do your borders and your binding. Leaf peeping. See, this is lovely in bright colours, but actually, imagine this in your real sort of um, moders and the browns and the reds and the creams. That looks lovely and bright here, but I'm imagining this as well with more of your traditional fabrics. Maybe your William Morris. Amazing. Cozy farmhouse. That's made with fat quarters. So it's all designed. I mean, just because you're looking at smaller pre-cuts, this one again um, would be perfect for today's early bird. If you're thinking, right, I've got the early bird. I don't know what to make with it. There you go. You've got a really lovely wall hanging or like a baby size quilt. You could do a couple more blocks if you want. Um, you're going to only need five inch squares, five, eight assorted reds and four assorted prints in green, yellow, blue and teal. So, I mean, obviously you can choose as much as you want and then you only need um, half a metre of white for your background and that's a beautiful wall hanging or, or small, you could make it into a small lap quilt, couldn't you? So that would be beautiful with the early bird. I think a lot of people think, right, when you've got a small, when you've got five inch charm squares, you obviously are only going to be able to make small projects. But this is the great thing about having books like this dedicated to pre-cuts is that actually it's showing you how far your pre-cuts can go. Definitely go onto the website and have a look at the solids that we have. Because as you saw with the quilt that we had earlier on, just mixing it with an ivory or just having your background, like on this one, with white, and then you pop a colour again with your charm packs for the binding, it works so, so well. It works so well. So, that's a brand new book to me. It's absolutely gorgeous and it's only £22.99. That's your playful pre-cut quilts. So, would you like some pre-cuts to go with it? I know that we're having some issues at the moment um, getting uh, the, the printed panels here. Um, these are already here though, so don't worry, these are already printed, they're with us, they're exclusive to us, so you don't have any delay with the postage on these. Um, I'll go from the bottom please, this is KEUU49. This is called Fruit Punch and it's so beautiful. So these are your five inch squares again, coordinating, 20 coordinating five inch squares. I'm going to pop it down, Elliot. That's probably the easiest, isn't it? So you're getting all of these quite retro, tutti fruity kind of feel to them, which I absolutely love. Morning, Liz uh, uh, Lindsay. Good morning, Jackie. Come and say hello. Elaine, Angie's there. Come say hello to us on Facebook Live. It'd be lovely to have your messages. Hi Joe. Joe sent us a message in on the website. Hello from Joe. Loving the kits. Loving the kits. Oh, by the way, the kits uh, from behind me. I mean, they're beautiful, aren't they? And they're already on the web. They're already on the website. So have a look if you want to grab them on pre-order. They'd be beautiful. I love those colours. Purples are really, really popular, aren't they? They're so beautiful. They're really beautiful. So instead of having to get, I mean, this is such a crazy price, isn't it? Seven ninety nine. 20 coordinating squares and such beautiful, beautiful colours. We've left also, it's probably not the best example there to show you, here you go. Can you see that you've got a white solid line between these squares, which means that you're going to be able to cut these out with your scissors or with your rotary cutter without losing any of your five inch square. So it's just attention to detail like that. And you have got some extra white on the side as well, which don't throw away, keep that, keep everything, because this is going to be useful. Um, it's only just seven ninety nine. I love that. That's your fruit punch. We also have some more pre cuts to show you. It's going to be a lovely day today, by the way. Really lovely day. I love having Jules with us. Love having Jules. How was your breakfast, Elliot? Oh, is it all right? She went. Your lovely healthy breakfast that you had. He says, oh no, my girlfriend's going to be watching. Don't tell her I had a naughty breakfast. You didn't. You had a lovely healthy breakfast. Oh dear. I, I had the intention of having porridge this morning, but then when you put your order in, I was like, oh, that's what I want too, really. A bacon sandwich. Um, these are your harbour squares. Oh, there was a great book. Uh, there was a great book. There was a great project in this book. 
uh, that was very nautical. The nor this one, the the uh, the, <laughs> the Newport Beach. This would be lovely. I know that this is made with fat eights, but I'm thinking even if you just use some of the smaller pre-cuts for it, it would look really, really nice having the sort of seaside feel to it. Uh, the book's £22.99, you can see there on the side of your screen. Last few chances, by the way, last few chances on there. I love the colours of this panel. The cope and blue, the orange, they look very, very on trend indeed. And um, I just love the, the sort of scales of print. We've thought about the different scales of print in mind. So if you are thinking for patchwork, you could just simply do a really straightforward patched quilt and just sew them together as they are. You don't need to do any subcutting, but you get loads. I mean, it goes, it goes on and on and on and on. How many do you get? 40. 40. So bearing in mind, we've just seen the most amazing early bird special on Lewis and Irene for 12 99 So, uh, I mean, this is like an early bird special, isn't it? £12.99 for your Harbour Fabric Squares. Exclusive to us. Now also, look at how big this is. You've got loads of white on the sides as well uh, for your stash. Make sure you use it, it's 140 wide. Or, I'm thinking as well, you don't necessarily need to cut these all up. Have you ever seen Debbie do pin, cut, pin tucks between them? So you could do a cushion, you could just have, say, nine of them, and you could pin tuck between them that you keep that white line, and they look really, really lovely. And then quilt it however you wish. Um, get yourself some H640, and because they all coordinate so well, you don't actually even need to add any other your solids from your stash. They're beautiful. Right. Loads of those have just gone into baskets. Loads. Right, be aware uh, that these will come straight to you. Don't worry. I know that we uh, have been saying there'll be a slight delay on some of the exclusive panels. This one, we already have in stock, so you don't need to wait is good uh, right we've also got the paisley design oh yes i've not seen this in ages i totally forgot about these colorways and they are so so pretty oh i love it right are you going to join our um and now you're in our bubble elliot me ellie uh, and cat are all working together now for the next month or so um so are you going to join our crafting club because we've got loads to make. We bought our reindeer kits, which we're waiting on our panels to deli be delivered. And there's, um, we've, got, um, we've got loads of projects in mind, haven't we, Kat? Yesterday, Sasha Quilt. We'll get you into crafting. We're gonna, um, we're gonna sort Elliot out and make sure that he's a sewer by the end of this lockdown. <laughs> Similar stuff, he says, well, I like uh, tinkering with cars and DIY. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty similar. We can get you to put the like the rivets in and all things like that, can't we? <laughs> 40 coordinating squares, five inch charm pack. This one. No, I've not seen this one before, I don't think. They're really lovely, aren't they? Different colourways as well, they look completely different. They're gorgeous. When you look at them as in each individual squares and you imagine them as though we were looking through the uh, through the Lewis and Irene one, they're like cabbage leaves, cat. How romantic. <laughs> I love cabbage. Do you? Do you like cabbage just boiled? There's loads of different ways that you can do cabbage, isn't there? Did you know that the cabbage that you have, um, the seaweed, crispy seaweed that you have at the Chinese, is cabbage that's just with loads of brown sugar. It's lovely. It's cabbage, yeah. £12.99. <laughs> Did you know that, Elliot? Oh no, this is why I'm called Princess Hungry Tummy. It's half past eight in the morning and I'm talking about food already. I'm talking, I'm talking about Chinese takeaway and I've spoken about Greg's and breakfast other places. Because I always think, why do people keep messaging me about food? I don't think I talk about food that much. To the point that I even said to my friend last night, do I talk about food lots on the show? And he said, no. Apparently I do. Gosh, I'm so sorry. So sorry. Um, we've also got the tutti fruit. I call it tutti fruit. It's not, is it? It's called fruit, 
fruit punch. Tutti frutti. Um, this time we had 20 before. We've now got 40 squares for 15 99 Brilliant value for money. If you've got any pre-cut books, like the one that we've just said, then this is absolutely perfect. The blues, the corals, um, the reds. And it's a really good way of getting all of these fabrics in your stash. Because if you're thinking of doing things like English paper piecing or something where you want to have a big variety of, uh, of, um, of fabrics, you would have to buy a lot of fabric to see all of these different coordinating prints. You have to buy a lot of fat quarters or a lot of half metre units. And this is brilliant value to say that you've got such a great variety. I wonder whether at this point, Kat, you're going to be getting your EPP out. You'll be sitting in the gallery doing EPP. <laughs> she said, I'll get really told off if I start doing that. But you are going to, um, you are going to get your EPP back, aren't you? Back up and running. Back in April, it, it did get quite concerning, the amount that Kat was stitching, <laughs> to the point that she had really, really quite bad sunburn because she was just sitting outside in the blazing heat. Oh, my word. She got so told off um, uh, by one of the guys at Jewellery Maker, a colleague at Jewellery Maker, saying, Kat, what are you doing? And I, she walked in and I said, Cat, oh, you've got to be so careful. She says, I didn't even realise. I was literally just stitching away. Didn't wear a thimble, so my hands are ruined, and now my skin's damaged. <sighs> Deary me. 15.99. She said, oh, I've learnt my lesson. I won't be doing that this, this time round. Luckily, it's icy. <laughs> you have to just scrape the ice in the morning. Oh, here we go. Alice and Marion, cabbage fried with bacon, a dash of double cream, with your egg on top. There you go. Top tip. And Alison is a top chef. Um, we just saw Bex read Alison and we said, did you get your cake? Did you love your cake? And we were saying how amazing it was. I did have the last Freddie Mercury cupcake yesterday and it was still delicious. The last set of five inch charm squares. I know we're talking about food again. Maybe you need to start doing a tally for me, like a swear jar. Every single time I mention it, I have to put, I'm not going to say a pound because I will be broken by, uh, <laughs> by 12 o'clock today. Maybe 20 pence. 20 pence ago. And then it means that you, at the end of the week, you guys get to eat what you want. <laughs> yeah? Food dinners on me, lunch on me at the end of the week. Uh, 15 99 I love this print. This is so, so beautiful. Ditzy, florals, gorgeous colours, you've got printed ginghams, you've got lovely spots, you've got different scales of print. Oh, I love it. You've got the gingham print with the, uh, the floral as well. Remember, you're getting loads and loads. 40 coordinating squares. £15.99. It does look like a... It looks like a um, English country cottage kitchen that's what it reminds me of it's quite kitschy do you know what i mean just one pmp if you've opened your order already loads of you checked out on the early bird today um we had i think we had over 100 of those so why did everybody who got the early bird because it's completely sold out it means loads of you have opened your order with us and therefore of course you can purchase as much as you want and you'll only still pay 3.95 that one pmp and that isn't just on the show so my word of wisdom is if you've bought something it's definitely worth, even if it's later on this evening, having a bit of a scroll through all the different categories on the website, having a bit of a think about uh, what, what it is that you might need. Do you need any more machine needles? Do you need another uh, top up of, uh, of rotary blades? Let us uh, just have a look through the, the website and see, do you need any more solids? Do you need to stock up on anything ready for lockdown? So it's definitely worth having a look through the web if you've opened your order. And same PMP on Yarn Lane as well. Even though it's a different website, you can still log in with the same username and it's only one postage and packaging across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, which is later on today at, uh, at 11 o'clock. See, I've got so many friends that do knitting. So many friends that do knitting. Um, I've, I've done crochet before with wire for jewellery making, for our sister channel, Jewellery Maker. So I've learned how to crochet, but I've never done like a, a full project. I've always just done like necklace pieces and things like that with gemstones. So I'm so excited to learn. Are you? I know loads of people got involved and bought the beginner set as well. So if you are a beginner, 
don't be scared, get involved. This is the perfect time. We've got a month to sit and just do some knitting. And my friend who's a knitter, uh, she's Jazzy Knits on Instagram and she's brilliant. Uh, she said to me, apparently it's supposed to lower your blood pressure because it's so calming. And I thought, oh, I bet that's just so lovely. I mean, this is, um, yeah, it's just quite methodical, slow, lovely pace, just switch off. I'm certainly not making the mistake that I did last time. I don't know about you at home, but back in April, I would sit and watch rolling news, rolling news, rolling news. And I thought, right, this time I need to just have my little bit of zen. Sit at home and whether it be listen to a podcast or just do some slow sewing. We live in a fast paced world, don't we? Where everything's quite quick, whereas... Um, Good idea to do something a little bit slower. Uh, right, let's talk about fat quarters because this is probably one of, if not the most popular pre-cut that we all have in our stash. Um, if you haven't, don't worry, we've got some fat quarters to, to stock up with. This one is a brilliant book. It's a Susie Johns book. I've met Susie before and she is absolutely brilliant. And she, she, she necessarily, well, she said to me, I don't class myself as an expert sewer by any means. She said, I want to make things that everybody else can make too. Um, and I put it into terminology that everybody will understand. And what I love about this is that you have got projects for everybody in here. So you've got things like, right, so it goes through the basics, everything that you'll need to know right from the start. So obviously at the moment, if you've just got into Sewing Street, you found us over the last couple of months, and you're thinking, right, I wanted to start some classes when they were up and running. And now we know it's going to be probably a bit longer until we can all get together and do some, um, do some workshops or, or courses and things. And I must say, my workshops to me when I first started sewing were really invaluable. I learned so, so much and I know we're not able to do that. So a good book is going to be fantastic. This is like your, your workshop and especially with the guidance that you have every day from Sewing Street. Tune in every day, you'll get loads of inspiration and great tips. And of course, you can always ask questions on the fan page as well. And of course, all of our shows are always on YouTube, so you can watch them. But it will talk you through all of the different equipment, embroidery, um, any top stitching or, you know, different techniques, additional techniques that you might hear us talk about on air and you're not quite sure what it is. So it goes through the decades. I love it. So you've got 1930s. Some really lovely little fabric. Uh, of course, that will look completely different if you do it in a, in a tulip pink or something. It doesn't need to necessarily be 1930s inspired. But what I love about it is they're all very useful projects. So a thing like a needle case is a lovely first project. You're going to need a pink cushion. So it's lovely to have a, a pink cushion. Embroidered cushion. Oh, if you love embroidery, stay tuned for 11 o'clock. We'll do some great um, demo on, on embroidery as well. Little pyjama case. That's so cute, 1940s, we've got a, um, what's that little brooch? Yeah, flower brooch, machine cover, all very useful things. Coat hanger cover, peg bag, cotch quilt. These would be a lovely, this would be a lovely lockdown gift for somebody actually. If you speak to somebody, if you speak to the customer service team, ask them about adding a friend's address. You might just need to pay the extra, the, you know, the postage, but it's worth speaking to them. I don't know, if I'm being brutally honest, I don't know the policies are on, you know, putting another address, but um, I'm, I don't see why you couldn't add another address on, you know, to send to a friend during lockdown. It's worth asking the customer service team if that's possible, but this would be a great, great book. Or get it home and post it to them separately, need be, or put it through the, the letterbox or something. This is really lovely. Tea cosy, apron, I'm gonna be doing an apron later. A spectacle case, hot water, ah, oh, hot water bottle. It's time, isn't it? It's that time of the year. Who was it was talking about having a hot water bottle at bedtime the other day? Was it you or Liam? No. No, someone was saying that they had a hot water bottle for bed the other day. It might have even been Joe, you know, your brother. Are you a hot water bottle kind of family? I had my heated blanket on last night and I must say it was amazing. I'm a heated blanket kind of girl. I do love a hot water bottle. Do love a hot water bottle. Um, 1960s, we've got some toys. We've got some more embroidery. We've got a little child's dress. 
notebook cover. This is a good book for us to remember, actually, Kat, because there's loads of great projects. A draft excluder, an owl, mobile, dicky bow, changing mat, shopping bag. All of your lovely uh, templates as well in the back, everything that you need for just £12.99. That's from Susie Johns, and it's brilliant. We've got some fat quarters um, if you haven't got any already. So we've got, should we do the um, naturals? These are your natural fat quarters. So you've got your lovely uh, sort of, well, these are almost like, I'm trying to describe what they are. Do we, are these the right ones? They've got different prints on them as well. They've got like these Perusian prints. This one's like, yeah, our French um, French prints. I'm just going to get this one out so you can see because it's like, I think this is like little labels, little adverts in a newspaper or labels that you can use on quilts or things like that. They're gorgeous. Reminds me of like uh, adverts and packaging. They're great, aren't they? And it isn't um, a quilting cotton, it's heavier. Uh, it's uh, a woven fabric. What, what would you sort of describe it as? It's almost like a canvas, really. They're really lovely. But they're all dedicated as well, as you can see, to sewing. Oh, they're 45% cotton and 55% co uh, hessian. <laughs> Oh, they're lovely. I'm thinking like sewing machine cover you could do with some really beautiful cream rickrack. You could do little storage tubs, add some nice ribbon. You could do little drawstring bags. How about doing like a nice bottle of wine, like a tote bag or um, a bottle cover? I'm sure um, Derby Shaw's got one of those, actually, a pattern for a, a wine bottle cover. But there's plenty in the Susie Johns book, actually. This is going to be perfect. And then you also get... Uh, three more of your natural fat quarters. Fat quarter, just so you know, is half of your half a metre. So half of the half metre is a fat quarter. Okay, the next colours that we have, again, similar feel to them. Uh, this time we've got the spot, the gingham, the hearts. This is called brown natural, which is this one. Uh, right, so... £12.99. pence. This one has got a really delicate white heart. Can you see? Yeah. Let's put a little bit of ribbon. Christmas bags. You've got, don't throw away your uh, your twine as well. Because that's going to be useful. Everything's, you know, everything you can use again, can't you? Put it in your stash. Little um, little cut, even just your uh, your end, just any of your little what you think are little scraps. It's definitely worth keeping hold of. <laughs> Twelve pounds ninety nine. And then we've also got the one with hessian in. There's so many different ideas to use hessian with. I love hessian. What, 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 why are you not a fan of hessian, Elliot? I use hessian for virtually all of my wedding. Wooden spoons, you can't dry them. Dry something that's wooden is the texture. Hessian reminds him of dry wood. Drying wood with a towel, Hessian reminds him of that. <gasps> oh, I love, I can't wait for our bubble. We're going to have so much fun together. No, that, I, I know what you mean. Some people have a strange thing with textures, don't they? Um, I must say, Delphine yesterday, when she had her rotary cutter and it was squeaking, that was making me go a bit funny. You know when you, someone scrapes their knife on a plate, like, <coughs> it's like, oh. Oh, yeah, chewing cotton wool, that's a strange texture. Yeah, it makes my, um, it makes all of my, all of here go all sort of tingly. I don't like that. Hessian. Fat quarter. I'll turn it over for you, Elliot. Two cotton fat quarters, a jute and a linen. Lovely textures to wear over there. Very natural. And of course, you could applique it on top of them, couldn't you? Or well, some Christmas motifs on there for Christmas stockings. For Christmas stockings, they'd be really, really lovely. Just £8.99. What a nice gift for somebody as well.
<laughs> Do you know what we need to get Elliot for Christmas? Some wet wood to dry and a towel. <laughs> That's so strange. Has anybody else got any weird things like that? That it's um, it's probably not weird to you. It's just normal, like texture. What makes you feel funny, cat? Freshly walking snow, the crunch. Oh, I love that sound. Crunch, crunch. Oh, I love that. Oh, that makes cat feel weird. There's obviously nails down a blackboard, isn't there? Oh. We don't have blackboards anymore, do they? It's all um, on uh, iPads or screens, touch screen boards. It's crazy. No chalk. Um, we feel old now, don't we? Feel old. Oh dear. Right, so we've got the reds. The lovely reds. I remember, I loved rolling in the projector, um, you know, the, the big projector. Everything's just on computers now. The reds are gorgeous, that floral, the spot, the stripe. Sorry, we haven't got any of these Sasha um, patterns. They're all sold out. Um, and I don't know when we'll be able to bring them back. I'm sure we will. I'm sure we'll be able to, to get some more instructions or some, uh, at least instructions. I don't know whether they're about the full kits, but we'll do our best because they were amazing, weren't they? That's a, another one I'd love, love, love to do. It's a gorgeous project. Well, I don't know, everybody got that yesterday. Fourteen ninety nine. you got your stripe. Don't worry, it's not your eyes. <laughs> it's Elliot's eyes. $14.99. This one's got lovely texture. Um, it's like a, a linen. It's really, really beautiful. You've got your stripe, your spot, and your floral. $14.99. Hi, Susan. The Fat Quarter book is still available as, at the moment. We can run the graphics for you. Uh, the Susie Johns book is only twelve ninety nine, and you've got 25 projects, which then you can mix and match. So, for example, even though it says there's that many projects, that's a nice memo board, you could also do, I'm thinking, well, there's loads of these cushions. See, so you're getting the pattern, the uh, appliques that you could put onto different projects. We've also got a Fat Quarter Toys book, which is my favourite, favourite toys book that we do. It's absolutely adorable. Um, 50, and again, using Fat Quarters, £12.99. And, and there's so much in here. You've got, let me um, scan through. There's so many beautiful projects. Oh, and right, so it goes through in sort of like age groups, but you've got toys, play mats, a bit of quilting, a bit of applique everything so you've got all of these really lovely sort of learning bas uh, loan learning baskets uh, not learning baskets learning um, textures and different educational things as well like ring stackers rattles bedtime buddies play mats wall hanging cat and mouse look at that cat and his fabulous outfit little red riding hood little ballerina see my goddaughter would love that she would absolutely love that. You've also got your gingerbread man, kitty doll, soldiers on parade, bits and bollocks, robot. Look, hunky monkey. That's called a hunky monkey. Why do I find that so cute? Hunky monkey. That reminds you, yeah, cat of the the cat the, the cat. It reminds cat of the bat. In Greg's, no, it's not a bat in Greg's, it's a star, isn't it? Spiky Mikey. <laughs> it's a favourite biscuit in there. I didn't know that they were called Spiky Mikey's. Monty Bear, Buzzy Bee, Matilda Gosling. Look at the pig, hungry. <laughs> this is me, hungry little piggy. <laughs> it's a lot cuter, isn't it, when you say little piggy? Oh, I love his little legs. <laughs> Sydney dog, elephant duo, Rosie Rabbit we've done before with Cara, Wise Old Owl, Freddy Fish. What beautiful toys. Fox Pillow, all made out of fat quarters. That one's so cool, Ursula. Ursula the Unicorn. Your mermaid, 
See, there's so many that I know I'd love. You've got a little dinky dinosaur, five-eyed alien, patchwork pineapple, all using fat quarters, sweet straws, apples and pears. Oh, see, this is a good game. Do you remember this game? Catch the fish. But instead of having, you know, plastic toys, it's nice to be able to think about sustainability and reusing and things. You can chuck in the wash as well. So that's a really good game. A little ukulele. I love this book. It's brilliant. There's so much. I mean, I'm, I'm not even really, I'm going quite quick through these now, but we've done the hopscotch before. Match the number. There's loads of really, really lovely projects in here. Skittles, juggling balls, and then you've also got all of your full-size templates you just need to trace them out because some of them are overlapping but um, they're all there and they're all full size and they're nice and brightly colored so you can see which one's which it's not just lots of lines they're to scale yeah you don't need to um you don't need to upscale these which is great so i'm not very good at that especially um during lockdown i wouldn't be very good at it because i do take mine to the library if it needs upscaling so now's the time to do it morning getting back to hot water bottles amanda said um, I remember having no central heating and when you wake up with Jack Frost on your bedroom window, oh, the only heating was open fires and, um, and a Rayburn. Well, our heating's not working at the moment, so it's not good. Our heating's gone, um, gone kaput. So yeah, I'm the same. And we're, um, yeah, we, we've got, we live in a grade two listed building, so it's all single glazed windows. So I had Jack Frost on the windows this morning. I can totally relate to that, Amanda. But it's all going to be sorted soon. Fingers crossed. Should we do some fat quarters really quickly? Because Jaws is eagerly awaiting in the wings. Um, some of the panels. These are already here. They're ready to go. Don't worry. You do not need to wait. They are absolutely gorgeous. These are your stems. Right, I'm going to do this this way, Elliot. So there's one fat quarter. Pinks and blues with lovely florals. It's actually a bit more than a fat quarter because it's 140 wide. So look, that is a massive fat quarter. You've got the lovely blue. <laughs> You've also then got the blue ditzy print. Very, very limited. Very limited. Yeah, it's a little ditzy flower print. It's not spots. Oh, do you think it looked like a gingham from afar? No. And then, oh, look at that. Whoop. Oh, I tried to do that really quick. There you go. There's the other print as well. All four of these for £14.99. £14.99 exclusive to us. We also have, right, let's go whiz, whiz, whiz. Ah, under pressure. Jules is like, hurry up. Uh, we've also got the blue spot, which is this one. Look at how big they are. Remember, the, the, the um, full width of the panel is 140 wide. So remember, traditionally, your quilting weight cotton is 112 wide. So this is extra wide, which means you're getting extra big fat, fat, fat quarters. And because you've, got, um, because you've got beautiful, beautiful quality, they're exclusive to us, you're getting a great, great price as well. These ones have got lovely, almost like stitch lines. Can you see? And then you've got the teal blue floral. This one, $19.99. Great price, isn't it? Morning, Joan and Amanda. And then the final one, which one haven't I shown you? The spot. That one, I think. Oh, no, 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 no. I have seen that one, haven't I? It's this one, Misty Grey. Misty Grey. Really pretty floral. For $19.99. Right. Do we have time to do any more, Cat? We'll do good morning and we'll do hello, Pop It. Um, all of them will be on the website. So if there are any that you're after, do make sure you're checking out as soon as you can. Um, don't worry, we'll make sure that we spend plenty of time with Jules in the next hour. We've got the quilt. It's already on pre-order, by the way, and it's already selling very, very well. Oh, sorry, did you say good morning and which one? This is Staffordshire Mantelpiece. Love with the little dogs and cats. It reminds me of, um, which is the Staffordshire pottery? Is it um, Dalton, Royal Dalton?
I think it's Royal Dalton. I should know this because all of my dad's family are from Stoke and they would always look at the bottom of their plates. <laughs> they would have, um, I support Stoke City football team, but you would turn on the bottom of the, they would always look at the bottom of their plates to see if it were made in Stoke. So it must be that one, Staffordshire. There's your upside down teapots. There you go. <laughs> And you've also got your little ditzy scatter print, £19.99, £19.99. My favourite is the Itsy Bitsy. Is it called Itsy Bitsy? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Poppet, similar. Hello, Poppet. These are lovely. This one was one of the most popular um, panels, actually. I think it was when Jules and I were here last, and uh, it was really, really popular indeed. It's really pretty. The blue. The bluebells. Not bluebells, are they? The blues and the pinks. What song's that? Gosh, I haven't heard that for years. Tiptoe through the tulips. It's a scary film. I think it's like... Um, Oh, I don't know. I haven't heard that for years. So you get four of your large coordinating pack quarters. They are beautiful, really beautiful. All lovely prints there. Right, anything that we haven't managed to play will uh, be on today's show deals during the break. Everything for the next hour is on pre-order. Have a couple of minutes to have a look through and make the most of it. We've got this gorgeous quilt coming up with an Annie's quilting book um, right after the break with Jules, so we'll see you after this. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young, doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I had then had a bit of a break. Uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well. And then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing, and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it. So now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Hello, my name is Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday, simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. 
in that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learned lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Welcome back, welcome back. Hope you're all having a, a lovely morning. Um, I hope it's not too icy where you are. It's ever so cold here. It's gone really, really wintry. It's really dropped in the last in the last couple of days, which is just what we want, isn't it? Just what we want. Your heating wasn't working this, e this morning either. What is going on with all of our heating systems? Your dad actually works for a heating company. Uh, Cat's dad, years ago, I had to call him up, my boiler's broken, help me. But um, he wasn't able to, to be my knight in shining ar armour this time. But no, what is going on? Anyway, we were talking about pre-cuts in the last hour. We were talking about five inch charm squares. We've talked about fat quarters. Another very popular pre-cut is a two and a half inch strip. Lots of you might know them as jelly rolls or design rolls, depending on what designer you're working with. This is a book that is dedicated to those two and a half inch pre-cuts. For that price, it's eight pounds and 99 pence. So, um, Annie's Quilting Books, are fantastic value for money. I know that Jules and Annie are like this. They are best buds. And June Taylor, you're yeah, like that, you. aren't you? Uh, Annie and, uh, and June, best buds. And they, um, I know that they are fantastic, fantastic instructions. For anybody who is new to quilting, I love them because the value for money is fantastic. Uh, they're, always, they're always written very well, the, the content's very clear, and the, the quality of, of the, the patterns that you're gonna produce are gorgeous. So, Crystal is the one that we are working on today, which is the first one which again is put together with your selection of pre-cuts. So you can see the beautiful, beautiful colours, which we've done it in a very, very similar colourway today. It's gorgeous. So I'll come back to that, but this is what we're going to be uh, working on. In the book, it isn't just that one pattern. You've also got your spot on quilt. That's nice. That's really cool, isn't it? I like that, that geometric kind of design. Your midnight. F reflections of fall that would be lovely for autumn really beautiful for autumn at the moment we're all about autumn cat's autumn bundles that she's been putting together are honestly just selling like hotcakes we can't get any more at the moment um so it so talks to you about different applique projects there's there's some really really beautiful beautiful color inspiration in here that's a lovely colorway isn't it that's really nice Remember, I mean, this one, for example, is a 64 by 80 inch quilt. So it's big. But of course, depending on how much fabric you've got, lots of these you can scale up or scale down. You don't need to take, uh, you know, and do all of that. You could just do four blocks. You could just do uh, two, four, six blocks. You can make it into a bed runner. You could make it into a table runner. You could make it into uh, an even bigger quilt, add another row. So, I mean, it's, it's completely up to you. These are a really good sort of bread and butter, give you clear instructions, but then it's up to you to make it your own. I love that. Stripping hexes. See, I would never realize that these were from two and a half inch strips and they look incredible. Look at that. The big ones as well, I love these. Okay, I think a lot of people are going to want this. The book on its own 
is £8.99. If there's one of those projects that takes your fancy, that you're thinking, right, I'm, I want a lockdown um, project to be getting on with, we're going to make sure that you're he we're here with plenty of inspiration and lots of great tips as well. So the back of all of Annie's quilting books, it also goes through all of your quilting basics. We give you lots of tips and things on, uh, on the show, but it will go through how to, um, how to sew your binding, uh, to get, uh, you know, to join your strips together, how to do your mitered corners. So everything's all there for you. It's £8.99, time-saving quilt. So even though, you know, you think of a big, big quilt, it's going to take lots and lots of time. Because you're using these pre-cut strips, it actually comes together a lot quicker than you think. So the bundles that we've got together do can come with the book. So don't worry if you're thinking, right, I want to get the bundle on here. You don't need to get the book individually. They also come with the book. A quarter of this purple stock has already gone. It will be busy. £59.99 and, pence and you get the book. You get some solids. Now you get five metres of solids. These aren't pre-cut two and a half inch strips. They are full metre. That's a metre of your mixer, 112 wide a metre of your dark purple, a metre and a half of magenta, a metre and a half of amethyst, that is a lot of fa fabric. And then you also get this panel. Now, at the moment, you know that we um, are struggling to get all of our exclusive panels here in the building and out to you at this moment. Our team are saying, with a very conservative head on, that it will be two weeks, but they are saying that to cover them if I'm being honest because we don't want it we, we really hope that it won't be that long it will be with you very very soon but if everybody checks out their baskets three quarters of the stock will be gone so check out today this will sell very very quickly but just to make you aware it might take slightly longer than our normal guaranteed three to five working day delivery so of course with everything that's going on in the world Everything's sort of taking a bit longer. There was a problem with uh, with printing and somebody coming out to fix it, etc., etc. It's taken a bit longer than we thought or we'd hoped. So just to make you aware, thank you for your patience. It will be with you shortly, but it might just take a little bit longer. All of that plus the book, fifty nine ninety nine. Good price, very good price. You're getting five meters of fabric so even if you're thinking right I'm going to try another project I'm not going to do crystal I might do crystal as a floor block or as a cushion but then actually I'm going to do the 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 um what about the the hexy one or you could do the spot on or the stars there's so many great great quilts in here as well that you could use the, the kit for Jaws did have quite a lot of fabric left over. I think she had a couple of metres of the solid. She had one metre of one colour and one metre of another. And then she also had some of the, uh, the, the two and a half inch strips. So we'll talk about that as well. There's plenty of fabric to play around with. Now, purple and blue are probably the two most popular colourways that we ever stock. If we do a bundle of purples or a bundle of blues, I think these are going to be very, very popular anyway, whether you're making this quilt or not. I've got a feeling these are going to be popular. The book is going to be really useful, or whether you gift the book, you do get the book included in the price, plus you're then getting five metres of blues. That is so good. You know, sometimes we try and put together bundles, Cat, of blue fabrics, and they're often out of stock, or, you know, we always get a lot of people asking. It's so popular. So just have a bit of a think. Bear in mind what you can make with this. So you're getting a metre and a half of sapphire, which is this one at the bottom, a metre of denim cotton mixer, a metre and a half of marine, and a metre of royal. Of course, you're also getting a panel, which Jules has already laid out for you to see. Um, there. Well, there you go. That's what it looks like. You have got so much so much fabric there and they are already not pre-cut into two and a half inch strips but they're there on the panel printed two and a half inch strips ready to cut talk to jaws all about that as well and how you work with those panels so just to make you aware 59 pounds 99 and you get the book as well if you want the book on its own it's 8 pound 99 and it's available individually if you've got any questions uh, about the kits about the panels if you've got any questions for jaws of course 
drop them in on the uh, on the uh, either on the Facebook page. I've got the live stream open. Or on our brand new website, of course, you can uh, you can really quickly and easily message in. Um, studio at sewingstreet.com is the email if you want to, to email. The bundles are selling very, very quickly, just to make you aware. They're all going to sell out this hour. It's busy, busy, busy. Hello, Jules. Hello. Good to have you back. Thank you very much. Good kind. to have you back. Yeah, it was a bit foggy this morning. Oh, I, I bet at half way. three this morning <laughs> when you wake up, bright and early. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful Lovely. quilt. I must really say, you've nice. got two gorgeous colourways as well. I know. Yeah, I couldn't, if you'd have offered me either one, I wouldn't have been able to choose between no. either one. But And also, the, the tonals of them, you think, kind of well it's not all purple there's a kind of splash of bluey and pinky purples but they all really work together well mm -hmm. it's so nice yeah it's really nice so how many blocks is it just the one block so this is rotated this is a, that's a block yes yeah. yeah so you you're just mixing and matching lights and darks and then rotating the blocks so you've got five rows uh sorry five columns of seven rows okay so, so. it is the sewing itself doesn't look particularly tricky it's being a bit organised with your colours, probably. Yeah, okay. and it's quite fun, actually. Oh, you, nice. You know, the, the panels themselves, if you have a look at the panels, they are set along and they fade down from light to medium to dark. Oh, lovely. So you, it's quite nice to actually be able to cut them up and then have your piles of light, medium, dark, and then you do your mixing and matching to get all of this malarkey going on. Yeah, yeah. So that's quite nice. Um, and obviously you've got four different solid E colours, uh, so to decide with your bigger, I think there's a couple that are uh, bigger volume, yeah, yeah. Uh, to decide whether which one you want to go down the side and which one you want to have as your flange and, you know, all of those yeah. kind of things. So it's quite nice. So even though we've given you the bundle, you've got a bit of design element in it as well because yeah. you're not. my quilt is not going to be like anybody else's quilt because I've chosen this, this and this. And, and so it's, that's yeah. quite nice as well. Absolutely. You can individualise. The blues, I must say, they are beautiful. And the yeah. detail yeah. on the, the panel is stunning. It's really pretty. I mean, you would never get this much variety for this sort of price in your strip rolls or your jelly rolls or whatever it is. It, it's, it's really nice. And you can be assured that once it's on a printed panel, all of the colours go together because yeah. they're all done in the same run, aren't they? So um, that's really nice as well because sometimes if you have to go to another panel you might get a slight variation. But these, they're all the same because they're all off the same panel. Oh, so it's that's really good, good to know. That yeah. is good to know. Right, so where do we start? Are we going to do the block to start with? Yes. Okay. Um, so you're cutting, uh, Annie gives you a cutting guide, Annie. Annie, you're on the first name My terms. Um, and on the cutting guide, it actually tells you how many of each, whether it's the plane or whether it's the strips to cut. Mm -hmm. um, with the planes, you get a choice. Uh, there are there's a dark and a dark print. Yeah. So on your instructions, just decide first of all where you want to put the dark and the dark print, or whether you want it to be the same sort of thing. Right. Um, so that sounded garbled, but it won't no, be garbled. No, you can see on the book it? here. It's it's you can see there's yeah. three definite sort of different shades. And then if you turn over the page, so you've got a dark print a medium print a medium light and a light yeah and then from the dark the second dark print you cut your edges so you, I decided that I quite like this one the best so that's the one that I was going to use yeah, and then I was going to use that one for the binding so you can you can decide what you want to do really with that um, and when you're cutting it out you will have quite a lot left over oh yeah fair. oh just so. so you know sorry Jules purple sold out oh purple has sold well out. done everybody because it is it's lovely it's oh. you'll be really pleased with half it. half the stock of the blues gone and when we start yeah. to see that come together as well <laughs> I know that'll be really really popular yeah get to your phones um but yes it's really nice so you you can decide whichever way you're around you want to cut it first of all whether you want to do your solids first or whether you want to do get straight in there and do your panel mm -hmm. um it doesn't matter because you'll be bringing everything all together but on your um solids you cut nine and three eighths squares which mm -hmm. sounds a bit of an odd thing but by the time you've done all your sewing together mm -hmm. they end up at eight and a half inch finished yeah. blocks um and strangely enough i follow the instructions because i need to tell you if there's any variations in it and on the instructions it didn't actually tell me anywhere to trim anything down so right. i didn't right you didn't need to. No? It works. So just go ahead with it. Oh, great. 
what I would say is when you're um, cutting your squares, first of all, so if you're doing your nine and three eighths squares, go across your width of fabric. So you'll level yourself up as normal mm -hmm. and then measure across. I use my cutting board as well as my ruler. Um, just to line it up. Just to line it up. So you know that if you've got a fold, that's level. So you straighten that edge. Um, and then you would straighten down on a on a marker is what I normally would do. Okay. So if you level yourself off, I'll just quickly show you how to um, cut your squares. You probably all know how to cut your squares, but just to make it more economical, um, if you make sure that you um, cut your nine and three eighths across the way, mm -hmm. that. so I would normally count Six, seven, eight, nine, and my three eighths is there. Then shift it. And then, match it at the bottom. I would then go, because you'll get, I think some ask for four and some ask for five, but you'll get one, two, three, four right. out of this. So you can decide. That'll give you an idea as to which one you want to be as your main fabric and which one you want to be, you know, okay. your darks and lights. And then just, the reason I'll do this is because we've, we've got a cut across as well. Um, another good thing, which I don't think we've got at the minute because I think it's so popular it's gone, but hopefully people have got it at home. You're talking about best press. Best press. Do you know what, that's so strange that you just said that because I just read in the book here, it says, here's a tip, because there's lots of bias edges in the quilt, using a spray starch to stabilise fabric before starting um, or while you're making this quilt, that's yeah. a good tip. Yeah, absolutely, because once I've done this square, so I've now got uh, my nine and three eighths again, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, three, eight. Uh, so once I've got this square going on, now I'm going to cut it across here. So I've been wa working with the straight grain, uh, so warp and weft, but now I want to do this. This is where you could get into trouble if you're not careful. So best press it first. I haven't, but you yeah. will. Best press it first, and then that, this is your bias edge. So if I did that, you that could distort. It. Okay. So, and you don't want that. Obviously, you want everything to be nice and even. So I suppose it's just got to handle with care. Yeah, just to know, uh, and just best press everything. Yeah. Best press your uh, strips as well. Mm -hmm. um, not that you're going to get a bias edge on the strips, but it just makes a cleaner cut. Okay. And if you notice on these, so you've got the same print, dark, medium, light on each one. You've got two of each, so you've got two lights, two mediums, and I've already cut one of the darks off. If you cut them open, uh, cut them apart and put them in your piles, that'll help with your selection to do your mixing and matching later, mm -hmm. which we'll do in a second. Um, just to tell you about these, I was, I have to say, a bit dubious <laughs> because I'm a measurer. Dubious. Dubious. I was <laughs> dubious of Wimbledon um, because I'm a measurer. And I thought, no, if it's printed, will it be right or won't it be right? Oh, OK. Um, and I thought, well, no, I've got to go with it. Got to be brave, haven't I? And I cut them all along the lines. I didn't measure at all. And it worked. Perf. There so, you go. So have confidence with it. Don't be a ditherer like I was. <laughs> um, you, can, you can quite easily cut it and not have a problem. So you've got your five and your, I can't quite remember the dimensions, five and a something, nine and a something, 13 and a something. It's good to do it with a rotary cutter, isn't it, as opposed to scissors, because I think um, you can really sort of line your ruler up and, and cut accurately. can't cut straight with scissors. I can barely cut straight with a rotary cutter, so no chance <laughs> with scissors. But if you go straight along the line, so um, work in a good light, because the, the prints blend so well that you need to see where the line is. If that's the way you're going, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, if you don't want to do it cutting along uh, the lines on the fabric, as marked on the fabric, and you choose to measure mm -hmm. perfectly fine, and obviously for other projects, you'll be using materials fine, um, but do one or the other. Okay. So you can't work in grams and ounces. Yeah, you that makes sense. You can't do lines and measure. Uh, so decide what you're going to do and go with it. So once you've made your first cut, that's it, you committed. But it's quite easy to go, I mean, that's 
either side, I don't know if you can see Elliot, but either side of that line, yeah. and that will be the five and however many it is. One, two, three, four, five and the bit. Yeah. So it measures, per do a couple of just to assure yourself, but it does work perfectly. And then obviously, um, the reason that you've got your variations is your two and a half inches are all in different um, colourways, aren't they? So this is my lights. And you do exactly the same all the way along. And make sure that you've got your, I don't know what's the matter with this one, but make sure you've got all the ends on. And then just, just pile them up and have them so that you can select your dark, medium mm -hmm. and light. So once you've done all of that, done all of your um, cutting out. I would cut it all out and as I say, pile it all up. Do you press before you cut? Do you give it all a good press when you get it home? Uh, yes, I yeah. do, but also I've had best press on everything. Yeah. So it's all kind of spray starched yeah. every, everywhere. Um, but yes, I always press before I cut because if you don't, sometimes you get like a little hump in your material, which right. is little humps are never good, are they <laughs> <No>. really? Um, <laughs> So having raced ahead, you can see I've got my little labels on them. As right, per. so this is a good idea. Get yourself organised. These multi-purpose sewing clips are great, aren't they, for, yeah. for everything, but to get yourself organised. So I've got a dark, medium and a light. You can see I've been eking into these. I haven't cut my complete panel, but um, um, so I've got little ones and bigger ones in each one. And you uh, just literally select one of each to make your first composition if you like so if we have I want a, um, a long one which is that one so you're going to have a tower of your long your middle size and then your small one at the top take each one and because you've best pressed it you can now finger press it with confidence. Are they the same prints as the purple, just different colourway? Yeah, they're so pretty, aren't they? Yeah, they're really, really lovely nice. floral. I think this might be a, a new design, actually. I don't think I've seen this, this printed panel before. They kind of remind you of something. They're not yeah. exactly anything, but they kind of remind you of something, so they're really nice. Uh, and even though you've got one that's kind of more purpley blue and one that's kind of more teal blue, blue, it still works. It doesn't matter, you just put them all together. There's some that are like almost um, paisley style prints, yeah, aren't there? I really there? like There's those. Some that are like waves. Like that kind of, yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Um, right, so next thing that you'll do is you will do a quarter of an inch seam on everything because you're quilting now, ladies. Okay. And gents, sorry. So and whoever quarter, is out there. Do you there. put a quarter of an inch foot on or not? Do you just mark it on your... Uh, well, I haven't I got a quarter of an inch foot on here, but at right. home I would have one. But the only problem with a quarter, a quarter of an inch foot, if you're not careful, if you don't select the right stitch, your needle comes down onto the metal. Ah. So you have to just be a bit aware of, of that. And then what you're going to do, so I've, I've centred each one. Um, I'm not going to pin. Uh, you don't need to because you've... you've got everything best pressed. So you're doing a little pyramid? Yes, so right sides together. I'm gonna do a quarter of an inch seam along here. Normally, I'm a fan of chain piecing, which is where you put everything together, um, so you, you run one piece through and then another pair of pieces through and then another pair yeah. of pieces through. You can't do it on this okay. because you've got a bit either side, which mm -hmm. is not sewn, so it's um, not as easy to do it. So in we go and we'll just a we'll get our pyramid and then we'll do some cutting. Have you got any snips? I have got, sorry. <laughs> Smallest pair of scissors I could uh. find. Yes, <laughs> let's do that one. So that's that one. And when I was pressing, I was pressing up the way so it doesn't really matter what you do as long as you do it consistently I didn't open my seams open and flat because I wanted them to stack when I was doing the I was going to say, do you together. have seams to nest on these uh, they do, yeah they do. do it doesn't tell you in the book but I just went with it and decided that I was not going to open and flat them I would I was going to press them all to the same side 
So this is a really nice sort of confident beginner. If you've done yeah. a project or two before, if you, it's not your first project of, of quilting. But yeah. actually, it's a really lovely one for a confident beginner, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I would say, you know, give it a go. That you won't get into too much trouble and if you do get into trouble you can get yourself out of it yeah so you know don't worry too much about it but yeah confident beginner I reckon so all my seams are going up so this is where you're now going to make the other part of the block that's okay. um, here so in the book there is a template it's a halfway template so you get that printed in the book I just photocopied it and then uh, I stuck another piece on because okay. it says to go place it against the fold and what you're going to do then is you're going to place that onto your block I've got my centre piece there which I took to be the seam down the middle of my paper if I haven't got a photocopier I'm thinking at home because I will normally go to the library and it's not going to be open so could I trace the template out is it to size I don't need to you don't need scale or no, anything no, no. like that. You can trace it out if you want to. I'll show you something else in a second. Cool. But you can trace it out if you want to. And don't be worried by the fact that it doesn't go right to the top and you think, oh, I'm missing a bit. The reason for that is that um, you'll have quite a few seams. So what we're trying to do is get rid of that extra bulk uh, on the top. I'll show you in a second what that is. So that's why the template is flat. There's okay. some lovely quilts in this book though, aren't there? Yeah, really nice. I love and that look. hexy one. Look. Oh, so are they scraps for your stash? What could I use those for? So Triangles, because they're quite useful, aren't they? You know, you can get, um, if you decide that you're going to do like a little edging on something, you could fold those over. Oh, like little prairie points yeah, on it. And yeah, and sew that in, yeah. Oh, so you lovely could do idea. something like that, or you can actually cut out your little mini hexes out of that. Yeah, um, you could just sew them all together as triangles. Yeah. you know, do some half square triangles. Obviously, if you sewed them together, sew them like you can just bend it around and sew them across. They will be a little bit smaller. You'll have to trim them down. But yes, yeah, you've got loads of stuff. If you decide that actually, um, I, I can't do templates, mm -hmm. whatever reason. If you have a look at your cut squares now so you remember we cut them over mm -hmm. that's how they're going to be fitting so that is where you could cut oh i see okay and again ounce in, ounces and grams if you're going to do it that way do it that way if you're going to do it that way do it that way okay Just Don't be consistent so with whatever it is that right. you do um so that you will have a whole raft then of um, these blocks, I think it's 35 mm -hmm. of these that you'll but have. But don't be panicked that you're missing the point of your triangle. No, not <laughs> at all. No, missing that point. No, don't worry about <laughs> don't it. Don't worry that you miss the, the point. point. <laughs> miss, miss the point all my life, but don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so the next thing that you're going to do is decide um, which is going to go with which. Mm -hmm. So that's another fun thing. You can mix and, and match there, or you can be is random. Is there a way? I was going to say, can you be random? Are you, are you, you good be. at being random? I'm not good at being random. <laughs> I had to not think about it at all. I yeah. had to have other people talking to me while I was doing picking this. Up. It's just like picking and, yeah, yeah. picking and flicking. But what I would say is um, when you're doing... So there's a chart in the book um, which tells you... Uh, whether you're going to have a dark or a light and how it's all going to come together. Um, I found that that, if I see too many of those, I can't tell whether I've got a dark or a light or uh, whatever it might yeah. be. So for me, I label it up whether I've got dark, medium and light. Mm -hmm. And then, excuse me, because it's dropped on the floor, I made another little chart, which is a bit scrabby, but it was for me. Um, and I just put, that was a light one, and the big part was in the bottom corner. That was a medium, and the big part was in the top corner. That's a so good I, idea. That, I did a kind a of a, a grid. layout yeah. diagram. And all you've got to do then is, when you've got your stacks, just keep your, your you know, labels for dark, medium, and light on the top, yeah. uh, and then work across. And what you'll do, which we'll get to in a second, what you'll do is you will pair them up, and then I did a right pair, a left pair and then sewed them both to the middle perfect and then you've got your rows which you sew in turn nice. okay so let's um 
sew a one of these together. Uh, the other thing as well with the solids, it doesn't matter whether it's one way up or the other way up, but when I was cutting them, I was making sure that as I was cutting them in a pen, like I showed you at the beginning, I knew that was the right side and that was the right side. I just turned the other one over. So these are all right side up. Oh, okay. I suppose because when you cut them, yes, yeah. But that was just being pedantic because basically if you turned it the other way, you wouldn't you know wouldn't whether know. it was <laughs> right side or not. But now what you're going to do is, so you've got your stack and you've decided which order you're going to be sewing them in. You're now going to sew across the long point. Be careful if you haven't best pressed it. You will have done, but if you haven't best pressed it, this is the time not to stretch it. Okay. So just be a little bit gentle with it. Was that Sheila, did you say? Hi, Sheila. Sheila's asked what size the finished quilt is. The finished size is 49 inches by 58 and a half inches. Um, and that's doing 35 blocks. So yeah. each block size, eight and a half inches. It's a nice size quilt, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got five by seven. I suppose it's an easy one to adapt if you want to make it larger or if you want to make it smaller. Yeah, well, you've got plenty of material. And um, I had... I had some of my panel left as well um, just trying to think I did have I would say I'd probably be able to get out of the panel maybe about another four or five blocks I might be oh. able to get another row actually. oh wow yeah or oh, cushion then yeah yeah Black or a bag to put it in because if you have winter quil quilts and summer quilts that's you a know. nice idea I hadn't thought of that because I did think all these quilts we're all making run out of beds and chairs and things to put yeah. them on that you do might do it seasonally and, yeah. and put them into so if you make yourself a little bags. storage bag of the same pattern you, you know, know which what, one it yeah, is yeah you know which it is good tip maybe right. that's what you should design for us a <laughs> bag to put your quilts in right. <laughs> it won't take too much as ladies out there have already done it <laughs> oh i don't know um so basically you've got like little dog ears here and you've got a missing piece here but this will be if you imagine that that if i can get it onto the grid so that if you can see where it is now that's your quarter of an inch so by the time you've sewn a quarter of an inch that side and a quarter of an inch that side it will have incorporated that empty bit that you've got there right so uh, although you're thinking oh there's a bit missing it won't be when you've sewing your seams up yeah i love how much you're using the measurements on your mat as well do you use that use it all the time do you? yeah all the time and um i use a long ruler mostly sometimes i'll use um a square ruler if i'm yeah. squaring up blocks but i didn't use it in this case because it told me well it didn't tell me to do it so i didn't no. do it no the uh, easy life the, the genomic ruler that jules is using yesterday we did a comparison show um and this is the most affordable ruler that we have of this size in stock it's 24 and a half inch by six and a half which is brilliant because you can cut your whole salvage it is a great to have that yeah. size isn't it six and a half inches Just because great. if you've got a small space then you can go either way can't you you yeah. can do your small areas or you can do your long yeah uh, I think my cutting, my cutting mat at home is not. It is about it's twenty four. So my cutting mat at home Slightly is about smaller. that. So it's the length of my yeah. ruler, which which works well. Which is what you want, isn't it? They always yeah. say go for the sort of biggest mat that your space will allow. I did the wrong thing, really. Well, not the wrong thing, but for the time I was starting out, and it, it was getting quite expensive. So I yeah. bought a smaller cutting mat which I then outgrow really quickly because I was yeah. having to cut and shimmy my mat underneath. Whereas this is the biggest mat that we stock. It's a Millwood one and it's, yeah. it's 37 99 which initially when you're starting out, it sounds an investment, but even if you haven't got the big enough space, I store mine under the bed. Yeah. Really and to be easy. honest, it's protecting all your surface. So yeah. if you're whizzing along, oh yeah, you know, oh, how yeah. much is a worktop going to cost you compared That's it. to this? <laughs> Repolishing a dining table or yeah. re-varnishing. I know Delphine said she went into her kitchen worktop when she had it as too small a, a, a cutting it's, mat. It is easy to do, to yeah. be fair. All righty, so we are now um, lots of blocks. We're going to join them all together. So I've done three at the moment, and these were from the middle of, of the row. So this was this row, I think. Right. Um, but, you know, to be honest, don't get hung up about where you're putting your you know if you if you happen to put a dark wherever should be a light Doesn't who's going to know no. no there's only you that's going to know i think the up and down return is mm -hmm. the thing about it so as it happens i've got a dark but it's not a problem because i'm going to put it on the end of this one and just line it up 
quick stop so. warning, we've got three left of the blue Oof. and then it's sold out completely. So if you want the blue, three of those remaining and that's it. Book is available on its own, but remember in the kit you do get five meters of fabric plus your panel and the book. So you get lots and lots and lots to play around with. So I'm just lining those up. I'm not worried about the dog ears turning out top. That's not a problem to me at all. And then we'll just go in again. Um, you'll have pressed all your seams. Obviously, I'm not pressing anything because I'm being lazy, but you will have pressed all your seams as you go. In fact, I think I did a, a block pressing. You know, I got all my blocks done and then pressed them all right. and then started the next phase. Line. Yeah. And it just gives you time to then kind of um, settle yourself and decide Good how idea. you're going to do it. And also, you might not be able to do the whole quilt in a, you know, one session. It's it's oh well, not we've got a, we've got we've got we've got a bit of time now, haven't we, on our hands? Yeah. So if it is something that you just spend half an hour a day, an hour a day, it's lovely to be able to yeah to have a project to do for the next month. So that's going to be how your um, rows and columns come together so this we've got four across then you can oh, see that's that's, that's a decent size table runner that's what i thought Isn't table it? runner or a bed runner yeah. do you know just having yeah, yeah. a single one as a bed runner. yeah um so the next thing that you would do is you would have cut out your side pieces your flange and your binding so a flange we keep using that word what that I've is i've not seen one of these flange. before this is the first time that i've seen this so if you have a look it's free it adds a little bit of texture to very your posh. quilt it's very posh it makes everything look as if you've got it from a high-end store doesn't it um, but all it is it's a piece um, a, an inch of material which we've we've cut out yeah folded in half and then sewn underneath the binding ah. and what's that called Lunch. Oh. Yes. Like Le Mange. No. Well, yes. There you go. Yeah. Blue so, sold out, by the way. So uh, Kat's got the graphics live for the book, which is now available on its <laughs> own. £8.99. Oh, get the book anyway. Just get the book anyway. So the next thing that Very we nice. do is we're going to join your um, binding. So you'll have cut lots of strips of binding. I think it's six. Three and three quarter strips of binding. Um, and we'll do... The normal thing, which if you've not done it before, I'll show you what it is. So you've got, this is my wrong side. <laughs> I just had to check where, because only from the fold. So you want your wrong side up that way. And you're going to take this and do it at right angles, wrong side down. So you've got, you're making like a little square. Sorry, I'm getting a bit messy today, aren't I? Oh, you can make yourself at home. <laughs> Settle in. Settle in. Um, so we're going to do a diagonal uh, sew across here to join the two pieces together. And then once we've done that, when we open it out, it'll be a continuous piece. So what you could do is you could draw across that line and you could pin the pieces together if you wanted to. But you're going from there to there, so I'm not going to do any of that. You could do, I don't know. So I'll just aim for the bottom corner and hope for the best. So just simple, normal strip, normal running stitch to the bottom corner. Would you, if you're a beginner, you're eyeballing that, would you draw a line across? Yeah. Can you draw a line across? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, of course you can. And, you know, I'm here doing this quickly. You can take as long as you like. So if you wanted it all perfect, it's absolutely fine. Do you need I mean, to cut that excess off? Yeah, yeah, I will. That's not bad. Okay, no, that's amazing. What I would do before I cut the excess off, because this is quite a big chunk, I would do my pre-make your squares bit. Oh, good idea. So you're not wasting. Go. So what you want to do is go to the, to the waist side and do another seam. Sew it together and then cut up your seam. So I've got two lines of stitching there. I would cut in between the two. This is just another Jules top tip, by the way. <laughs> and then you've got some little corner squares. So if you were making this into a table runner, you could perhaps do um, an alternate colour and put on your corner squares oh, if you wanted to idea. do that. So that's what you'll do. The next thing that you do, so imagine this is your 
five by seven quilt, um, you will then do the long sides first mm -hmm. and then you'll do the short sides. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying it that way and, and you're going, that's short, Jules, and that's long. But I'm imagining this a being quilt. part of the panel. So I'm okay. imagining that being there. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> are you mad? <laughs> oh, we know you are mad. But. It helps, I think. So, um, right sides together. You can definitely join our bubble. They're all mad. <laughs> They're all crazy in the gallery. And in the, um, in the book, Annie suggests that you join two pieces together and then do your long side. So, join two strips and do the long sides then join the other two strips and do the top sides. What I did was I joined all the strips mm -hmm. and I just went round two sides first, so the long sides first, then the top and bottom. Mm -hmm. But I had my strip all joined. Um, it saves material, first of all, and also it saves me thinking about having to <laughs> recut and redo. So you could do that if you wanted to, or you can follow what Annie said, and that's perfectly fine. Either way is perfectly fine. I was just being a bit more frugal so let's join this to the side and then I can show you how the flange works uh, so again quarter of an inch seam you'll have pressed everything in between time and all you'll do is if you do it my way where you um, do get to the bottom, then just turn it the opposite side and you know, out of everything, you know this strip is square. So use the squarity, that's not a word, but you know what I mean, the levelness of that strip to make this be square. So I'm coming back in. Uh, and bear in mind that you put in another strip on that side, so as long as I've got a square edge there, so my top and bottom are square. Yeah. And that just keeps everything in, in place. So that's what you'll do as your border. The next thing that you'll do, once you've done all you've, your border, is take your one inch strips. Now, obviously, because I'm only doing a short amount, I'll, I'll just take one. Um, and you'll press it And this is for half. the flange? So this is for the flange, and you'll press it wrong sides together. So we'll be doing a that way press, which I'll just quickly do that. Because it's small, you will want to press it. Okay. Uh, it just makes it easier. Just press it in half? Yeah. Uh, and it just means it's more handleable if you... Uh, I've got some words coming out today. Um, <laughs> if you do that just so you know book is now limited there is a lot of people who've got it in the basket all i'm going to say is do not wait until the end of the demo to check out only because all the kits have now sold out and there were a lot of kits that were books were allocated for the kits so there's only a certain amount of these books that we now have individually um, and they're always very, 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 very popular. Just so you know, there's nine different projects. It isn't just for this pattern. And I know you can pay £10 for a pattern yeah. or more so, in fact. It's really You've got good. Uh, nine patterns here for £9. A pound a pattern. And pound a pattern. Do you know what? It's a techniques book as well. So if yeah. you're just starting quilting and you're getting a bit bemused by all of these different terms and patterns and all that kind of stuff. This is really helpful. She's got pictures, she's got words, step by step. Very clear really diagrams. Useful. Yeah. I know a lot of people work differently with photographs and diagrams, whether you prefer, and it's got both. Yes. And it's spaced out really well. You know, yeah. sometimes when it's all text, it's just quite daunting. Yeah. Quite a lot of us as creative people are visual learners. So it's really, really lovely to be able to get, you know, the inspiration, but be able to see really clearly, right, am I going to be able to conk this? It's for a, a, a confident beginner. Finish size of the quilt, the block size, how many blocks I'm going to do, what it looks like, the, the finished quilt, what you're going to need, project notes, 
cutting. I mean, look at all of your real sort of comprehensive cutting instructions before you then go into all of your, your different instructions. And then also, even like you say, basics, down to here's a diagram of how you do a running stitch. Here's a diagram of how you do a blanket stitch, a buttonhole stitch. And it's not one that you need to sort of squint to see. They've really upscaled this so you can see it very, very clearly indeed for your raw edge applique. There's some beautiful projects. I think it just gives you a bit of inspiration of colours as well to use. I'm not great at putting colours together and if you're, you're starting to sort of think, right, what I'm putting my own stash together, yeah. you get some inspiration of what colours to do. Yeah, absolutely. Right, so you've so pressed I've your... pressed my little one inch strip yeah. in half. Um, now it just says to tack it. I actually did sew it because um, I would do a mitered corner and I was thinking, can I do the two together? And then I decided that I couldn't because I wanted to do the mitre. So I don't want the shifting about while yep. I'm doing that. Uh, so just do a little edge stitch within your quarter of an inch. Um, don't do it too far over. You're just really wanting to secure it. You can lengthen your stitch if you want to. So you make it more like a basting stitch. Okay, so right up to a five. Yeah, so you don't, you know, it's not a... A long winded way round but literally you're just catching the edges okay so again we'll just straighten that off and I'm using the edge of here to straighten it off because I know that is straight I've just done it and then do the top one um, and then the final piece of this combination is to put your border on mm -hmm. no binding and it began with a b <laughs> right so that's where that will sit now your binding um is your longer uh, sorry your wider the mid width strip. so do you need to cut that first two and a quarter yes so when you're doing your initial cutting you will have decided which colour is going to be which and you'll have done your squares and you'll have cut your binding. And explains that, that in the instructions. Explains it. So it explains how many width of fabric and how wide it's got to be. Okay. Uh, so your binding here is two and a quarter, the flange was an inch and then the border was three and three quarters and it tells you how many strips width mm -hmm. of fabric of that that you've got to do. Okay. Uh, and then you can join them all together. So this I would normally have done exactly as we did with the border, just uh, joined it with the one piece that way and one piece that way, and then sewn it from corner to corner. Right. So now you've got this, which you're going to put on, and you need to imagine that you're going to sew it and then turn it to the back of the quilt. So from here to go round to the back of the quilt. So it's sort of counterintuitive, but if you just measure all of your, uh, sorry, just lay all of your raw edges together. And I usually start just a little bit above. Um, if I was doing the full quilt, what you would normally do is you would pin this and then start about four inches in. Yeah, okay. Because when you get to the other end, you want right. to do a tuck in, which I'll show you this morning. Uh, so I will start it midway because you don't normally get time to do a border, do we? Um, no, it's really good to see. I, I've, I've really found this very, very clear, especially when we're going from the cutting right through to the finishing. It's really good to be yeah. able to see these points. We don't normally get to see them. No. And I'll show you a mitre corner, because I've got a little corner here. And I mean, I all mean, of these, uh, you're going to be uh, a wizard binding by the end of the, this yeah. book, because of course you're going to practice your binding with lots of projects. Yeah. Uh, so you just do, you go in quarter of an inch, and you'll come up to a corner, so if you stop a quarter of an inch away from the corner, lift your foot up, take out your um, quilt, and to do the mitered corner, you go up. Oh, hang to on. Make a we right might angle. need to just. Oh, sorry. Scoot across. Thank you. So we're going up to make a right angle. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice little triangle there. Ignore your flange. Don't worry about that. And then we're coming down again. So this is uh, pressed. You always will press your binding. And if you line up your edge here with the raw edge so that you start stitching from the very edge again. 
Okay, so we're continuing around. Don't need to pin or clip at that point, no. Just Pinning is a nuisance because you've got to keep taking your pins out and starting again. Uh, so just be confident, you will be able to do it, don't worry. And if not, we've got our good old friend in the drawer. <laughs> Mr. Unpicker. <laughs> what have you got in the drawer? Mr. Unpicker. <laughs> He's my friend. Uh, and then you just continue, so all of your four corners. Oh. You come and thread hello. it. Hello, hello. Yes. How rude. Oh, no, I think it's um, it's my bottom. Oh, you're bobbing. <laughs> my you're bobbing. bobbing. My bobbing's not bobbing along. Just right. so you know, Talk what I like yourself. on here is that you can actually see that, I mean, jot down today's date because we've had some brilliant, brilliant tips from Jules, but also in the Annie's Quilting book, which is only 8 99 not only do you get all of your projects, you also get some really handy quilting tips. So follow the reference guide for more information. Um, have a look online or come back to the, to the demonstration. But it talks to you about quilting and batting. It talks to you about binding the quilt and how to join strips on a, diag uh, on a diagonal and where to sew. And, and again, how to do exactly what we've just been saying. So you fold your fabric back and then pull it forward and sew along, which is just where we are. So even though this is sort of saying confident beginners, it's still going to give you those basics. It's still going to be something that you're going to be able to, to pick up if, you've, if you haven't um, quilted before. I know that uh, the show has been, well, it's a brilliant, brilliant reference tool to be able to learn all these different techniques and see them. Remember, all of our shows are on YouTube, so you'll be able to find so many different reference points on there. But uh, what I love about it is that you can just get so many, it isn't just like, oh, all beginner looking quilts. You're learning really fancy yeah. kind of techniques as well. And although this is, we're, we're doing a quilt here, but we could be doing some other stuff, you know. Yeah. Like we were saying, table runners, what have you. That's it. So you use this technique all over the place. Yeah. And then once you turn it backwards, so if I turn that through, there's part of the mitre on that side. Just come to your left, please. Thank you. Got it. We can come in closer then. So if you go there. Way. Thanks, Elliot. Whoa. <laughs> and then you would turn it to the back side. And this is where you would do your, um, you probably would like to pin or clip here. So this would be your sewing. Hand sewing? Hand sewing. So you can either come down and do it across, which I like to do, or you can come down mm -hmm. into the middle and go across either side, if that makes sense. Right, what do you find is neater? I prefer to go up to that corner and then come across to this corner, because then I can wiggle that around and make sure that that line is the same as that line on the front. Right, and what stitch do you do to hand sew down? Uh, so like a whip stitch. Whip stitch. Yeah, yeah. Or you could do the crossed herringbone, the hem stitch, okay. where you um, pick up a bit on here and then pick up a bit on there, and that can be more invisible depending on what fabric you've got. Really. I love um, the finished effect of hand sewn binding though. It looks yeah. so beautiful. And well, it's, it's nice to sit in front of the television and yeah. just do some hand sewing. And the thing is, if you had to stitch, so the alternative would be to stitch it on the machine. And if you had to make sure that that was all down and you stitched in the ditch here, because that's what you'd need to do, and you had to get it bang on to there. Yeah, you, okay. the likelihood is you might not catch it. Do it, because <laughs> I couldn't do it. Um, I would have to, I would be unpicking a lot uh, yeah. if I wanted to. Whereas I know that for, my, for me, if I hand sewed it, I can be a lot neater. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful project, you, you want that nice You want it, to, yeah. And then once you've done all of that, if you imagine that you're coming back around with your long piece of binding, so it's like, well, we only started here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, put it back to where it was. Um, so what are we going to do with all of this? Well, this is where you tuck the end in. So what you would do is you would take the piece you're coming up to it with, um, you'll have had that pinned. Take your pin out. I normally would point this so that you don't get so much bulk on it. Tuck that underneath and then continue sewing it. Just continue sewing Oh, nice, sewing it's seamless, there. isn't it? Your eyes aren't drawn to it, especially if it's on a diagonal. And you probably tuck line. that end in, actually, to make nice. that 
a little bit neater. Just tuck that in, and then you can put the whole lot at the back. Lovely. So it's a lot easier to do it that way. But that just gives you an idea. I oh know yeah, we, we haven't got loads, that kit. We've covered loads and loads and loads. No, so thank pretty you. Pretty much done the, the whole colour. But that gives you an idea of what that colour combination and flange would look like. Oh, yeah. Because it's, it's difficult to imagine what, what is this without actually seeing it on there. Oh, yeah, the colour combination is going to look lovely. Thank you very so, much. Thank you very right. much. Very popular indeed. Both kits sold out. We'll see you in an hour. Oh, excellent. We'll see you in an hour with our embroidery. I love a bit of hand stitching, especially now, this time of year. Yeah. Especially with the weather, you know, the night, night, the dark nights during it, it's nice to do a bit of slow yes, sewing. So we're talking, the telly. we're talking about a beautiful brand new book in the next hour with Jules. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, just a quick recap of the book because there's literally a few of these left. If you want to grab the book, check out now. I love this quilt. I want to see this in, in Barley Pops. The rainbow ones. Remember, does, if you've got any of our two and a half inch strip panels, have a look on the website, maybe two of pink, any of the design rolls, any of the, uh, I think we had Lewis and Irene ones before. We've had such beautiful, beautiful two and a half inch strips. That is gorgeous. Eight pounds and 99 pence. This one, what about in your autumnal barley pops? Oh, gorgeous. If you've got that jelly roll sitting in your stash and you're not quite sure what to do, if you don't know what to do with it, you're not sure whether you know to cut it up or what to make, this quilt would be absolutely sensational. The one that we're working at on today was this one, which is your crystal. Uh, it works very, very well. I didn't compliment yours, but she was wearing amethyst purple earrings that matched so beautifully with her quilt. <laughs> very good uh, we have a lot of people who ask for Annie's quilting books because they are very very thorough and the value for money is fantastic a pound a project a pound a project just eight pound 99 nice gift for somebody as well you know somebody who's going to be um, yeah, obviously maybe not working over the next month um, and this is going to be perfect someone who always admires your quilt there's lots of beginner projects in here and with our guidance and help from the show as well jot down today's date I think that you'll have that covered no problem okay so eight pounds 99 is the time saving quilts with two and a half inch strips now if you haven't got pre-cuts don't worry because I'm going to talk about how you can change your half meterage into two and a half inch strips or into different pre-cuts very very quickly very very efficiently with our stripology creative grid so don't go anywhere we're back after this if you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you.
So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hello, hello, welcome back. Hope you're having a lovely morning. Uh, can I just remind everybody that from 12 till 1, if you've got lunch plans today, stay with us. Cancel them. Make the, postpone them to a little later this afternoon because we have got the most incredible, incredible show which launched on Monday called Yarn Lane. Um, our sister show, Yarn Lane, is a show that's dedicated to all things knitting and crochet. And the wonderful Rebecca Reed, who you'll probably know from our Monday shows at Sewing Street, is going to be presenting. Um, it's the same uh, postage and packaging as Sewing Street, so if you've opened your order already today, you'll only pay one PMP. You'll just need to jump over to yarnlane.com. You can still watch it on Freeview and Sky or, or on YouTube. You go to Yarn Lane YouTube channel. But the, if you're watching online, you will need to jump to their website. So Rebecca is very, very excited um, for a whole hour of Yarn Lane. What's that, sorry, Elliot? If you want to watch on Facebook, you can watch on Facebook as well. So the Yarn Lane Facebook. Oh, they've also got a great fans page, like the sewing page. Just started up a new Yarn Lane page. So if you do want to share all of your knitting projects. In fact, Neil put a post up yesterday asking for demonstrators. So if there's anybody out there who's watching today and you are an avid knitter or crochet and you fancy coming on the telly uh, to demonstrate and show us your skills, please, please do. We'd love to hear from you. So, um, of course, 
you can always get in touch with us. Now, we are, of course, uh, dedicated to all things sewing for the next couple of hours. Jules is going to be back with me for an hour and we're going to be doing some slow sewing. We've been talking all things pre-cuts, really. A bit of a theme going on here. So we were looking in the first hour at fat quarters and charm packs and pre-cuts like that. Just been looking at two and a half inch strips. Now, if you're working with half metre fabrics, if you're working with larger pieces of fabric, send in your pictures of using your stripology. I want to see all of your pictures of the quilts and the projects you've made using your stripology. And if we have any through this hour, we'll show them on air. It's studio at sewingstreet.com if you want to get in touch with us. Post them, of course, on the Facebook page as well, Sewing Street TV. Um, I have got the iPad over the other side of the set, but I will, um, I will keep up to date with any of your messages as well. All oh, right, in an hour. The kit sold out for George's last hour. It's been so, so busy, and I understand we're all in this weird boat, aren't we, at the moment? We're all in this, we're all on, it's not very often that this is what's the only thing I'm kind of feeling slightly positive about is that we're all in the same position. Never, ever, ever does everybody share the problems I have. You know, we all have troubles and different problems that happen in our lives, but actually, we never ever experience them all together at the same time. So please remember we're here, and please remember if you uh, want to just come and say hello, we're going to be on Facebook, we're going to be throughout the whole of November, we will be here with you every morning. So please come and say hello to us, and we're going to try and get everybody crafting and sewing and making, uh, and making the most of the next month. So. What I find so exciting is this book. This book is something that I think a lot of us are going to love over the next month. Um, I remember when we, of course, started the show back in February, I was talking to our founder, Steve Bennett, who I have actually known for, for a good few years now. And he's taken us under his wing. And the reason that he's chosen to take us under his wing is not because he's a sewer, or not because he's, you know, into crafting necessarily, but he is a huge advocate of mindfulness. He is a huge, huge advocate of making sure you might see him on our sister channel or, or, or on, on, on lifestyle, um, on primal living. You've probably seen videos. So, I mean, he's written incredible books and spoke to doctors about what it is that really helps you to keep mindful and look after ourselves. And one of the things that he was told by, you know, a lot of research, a lot of science, was hand sewing can be really, really therapeutic and great for mindfulness. So this is why he's took, taken us under his wing. So the reason that I love this is because it's slow sewing. It's doing a bit of hand sewing. Now we always live in a, a crazy fast world of doing you know, projects that are quick on a machine, but then why not do some embellishing on top of them with some beautiful hand stitching? You get all of the t templates to be able to make this book, to be able to make, uh, to be able to create all of these different modern motifs on lots of your projects, whether it be for cards, whether it be for for, for travel mug cozies, cozies and it's not just the embroidery they'll also talk to you about how you make these projects so that's great drawstring bags and, and designs on top of them we always talk about personalizing bags and put personalizing toys personalizing pumps maybe we should do this to your pumps this uh, the um, this lunch time cat all of your stitches are there and we're going to be going through the book with jaws in the next hour now are we going to get this on pre-order this hour we're going to do it. We're putting it on pre-order now. If you want it, grab it on pre-order. It's a brand new book which we're going to be launching with Jules, but we're putting it on pre-order. And the price that we're going to is there. So it's it's almost like, you know, when uh, you sign up to your favourite pop band and they're releasing their new um, tour dates. Do you know what I mean? I I don't think I've ever... I've never done it, but you always think, oh, those priority moments of being able to get there first. So it's a brand new book and you can now get it on pre-order. Make the most of it. Reserve your place. Speaking of brand new books, we've got three stripology books this hour. How exciting is this? Um, stripology books? I know. Do you want to um, do them now? Also know the Creative Grid Stripology XL is back in stock. It's going to be a busy 45 minutes. So I've got the Stripology Squared, I've got Stripology 2 and Stripology Original. Now Stripology Squared is um, a, a ruler that a lot of us might have already or you're thinking of investing in today. Um, I don't actually think it's available in stock actually. So if you've already got the Stripology Squared, this is going to be a brilliant book because you've got 10 
quilts that are made from uh, using the stripology rulers. Now, the great thing about stripology, and we'll go through it, um, is there is such a following. There is such a following. So it goes through your general instructions of quilting. Again, as Jules was showing us, this binding demo as well of how to, to tuck the ends of your binding in, how to do your mitre corners, all of your general instructions. And then it moves into your stripology ruler. So the stripology squared, well, this one, it looks like the, the normal stripology, actually, the main um, stripology. But um, it will talk you through how to cut in a quarter of an inch um, increments, how to square up your blocks, how to trim 10 inch squares, how to cut diamonds on the diagonal. So it gives you so many fantastic tips before we move into the quilts. And then what I love about this is it literally gives you great diagrams. It will tell you exactly where to place your fabric. Uh, it will tell you where to cut on the numbers or the, the key on your ruler to be able to create this very, very well. I mean, that looks like it would take you such a long time to construct. And actually, because of the, uh, because of the, 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 the sort of the, the cutting time that the stripologies take away, it will actually be a lot quicker than you think, a lot quicker than you think. And the, all of the quilts range from crib size right to your king size um, quilt. So there's so many. They give you lots of variations for every quilt, which is brilliant, isn't it? Look, crib, lap, full, queen, king size, all of your different cutting instructions for each of these quilts, which is brilliant. So every single one of them you can do as a crib, a lap, a full, a queen, or a king size quilt, which is brilliant. And it'll tell you how much fabric you're going to need and how to do it. This one's very effective indeed, I love that. Uh, velocity, that's so cool. So even though I think about stripology as making your own jelly rolls and your own design rolls and, uh, and subcutting. You think about Bargello quite a lot, just strips of fabric, whereas actually there is so much more that you can do with stripology. And this is why if you go onto Pinterest or have a look on Instagram, there is a huge following. They've got such a great online presence and a lot of people upload their, their pictures of stripology pictures um, on the internet quite often. So you get all of your templates as well. The book is £32 and it comes with everything you need. It works in conjunction with the Stripology Square. Look how detailed this is. So detailed. It's abs oh, it is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Fractions. Eclipse, that's a beautiful one. Um, there's so many people who, who have um, come in and said, I've bought the stripology, I'm completely converted. This has changed my cutting experience. I must say, I was always a bit dubious. Um, I always thought they look quite mathematic, whereas actually it does the absolute opposite. It eliminates, it eliminates, oh, it eliminates the maths. It's absolutely adorable, isn't it? I love this book. Absolutely love it. So that's just Tripology Squared. It's brand new today, £32, and it gives you lots of inspiration of how to, um, to put together all of your quilts using your Tripology Squared. Okay. We also have two other brand new books. This one, you have, uh, again, loads of inspiration in here of how to use your stripology. Six favourite strip patterns now made with one and one and a half strips, three sizes <laughs> for each pattern, mini, runner and crib size, um, all using your stripology ruler. So once again, look at how detailed this is. £15.99. pence going through your midi quilt, whether you want to do it as a runner, 12 inch by 33 inch, or a 29 inch by 40 inch for your crib size quilt. Strips. If you know somebody that loves their stripology, this would be a brilliant, brilliant gift, wouldn't it? This would be such a good gift. Um, 
strip off <laughs> going through all of your assembly Elliot's finding this hilarious by the way he's not seen stripology before I'm excited to show you the actual ruler Elliot so you can see what we're talking about strip search <laughs> brilliant absolutely brilliant so it goes through all of the different sides there's the strip off this is the strip search and this is the strips and salsa what's your favorite kind these are the strip off so clever, isn't it, that you can get a rounded shape using your strips. And there's no curves to sew there, no curves. They're all strips and strokes around the edge, but it does look like a circular, circular shape, doesn't it? Um, so this is £15.99, pence, a brand new in today. And again, extremely clear. Um, we will be working from these books. I'm, I'm predicting that hopefully one of our, I guess, designers is going to do a really big demo and do a lovely quilt with us, which would be really exciting. But launching today, £15.99. So that's the main Stripology book. Then we've also got the Stripology 2. So if you've got this one, or oh, done this one, um, have a look at these designs, slightly different designs. Again, six favourite strip patterns, three sizes for each, pa each pattern. So remember, you're getting not only the mini for this one, the runner and the crib size, you're getting the table runner and the crib size for this one, and you're also getting the, um, the mini and the crib size quilt as well as the table runner. So there's actually nine different options, isn't there? Plus then when you, you get the hang of it, oh, the reason they're called creative grids is because you can get creative. <laughs> you can make whatever you want. Using the Stripology XL, they actually say on the front of the packet, this was what sort of swayed my decision to convert to it, was it said it, it takes away 75% of your cutting time. Cutting time, those of you that are, are quilters, you'll know it takes a lot of time. I'm I'm the same with cook I am the same with cooking, uh, Elliot. I'm so bad at the preparation. I just want it all to be there. Whereas you and my husband Kieran, they were always like get everything all prepared. They spent hours prepping and cutting everything, and chopping everything. I'm like, oh, I just want to get cooking. I just want to get sewing. And um, in fact, whenever I do um, projects, Kieran will do my cutting for me because I hate it. When I started with the Stripology ruler, I thought it looks too mathematic and it's not. It cuts out the mask and it cuts out all of your, um, it does cut out all of your sort of thinking actually. This is amazing, like the hexes. <gasps> Do you love them all? Strip joints. You know that one, don't you, Elliot? Strip plus runner. Strip twist, strip joints, <laughs> strip lash runner <laughs> for fifteen ninety nine. If you've got your stripology sitting at home, if you've been a bit scared to use it, this book is going to demystify it and give you some great, great um, instructions. Those of you that have lost your sojo or just want to get sewing through lockdown, this is going to be absolutely perfect. Brand new in today, fifteen pounds ninety nine. All three books are brand new in today. Oh, well done, everybody who's getting involved. In fact, we've had some people who are purchasing all three books. That's so good. Now, the Stripology XL is finally back. Uh, the amount of times that we've done creative grid shows and I've said, is it back? Is it back? Is it back? Is it back? No, it's not back. So this Elliot, and for anybody who's not seen it before, is the Stripology XL. So it is a massive ruler created from the company Creative Grids. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm gonna go back to basics because it's been ages and ages since we've had this on. And I, I apologize now for anybody who already knows this, uh, but it might be a little recap for anybody who, who hasn't seen these before or is joining us for the first time. As I say, a majority of your quilting uh, and a big part of making a quilt is preparation. It's cutting your fabric, is, is, is spending time organising, is spending time measuring. You will hear Delphine say, measure twice, cut once. With this, you will only have to, you can rely on the ruler because they are so accurate. They're designed by quilters, they're made by quilters, for quilters. So they know what we're going to need, they know how to eliminate the mat. Now, as you can see, this is the XL, which is big. Just to do in comparison, this is the mini. 
So the small, the squared's out of stock at the moment, this is the big one. Now what I love about this is that you can do everything. This is the two most popular creative grid stripology rulers that they have now merged into one hybrid, one amazing ruler. So you can cut your strips, you can also see that you've got the squares, they're for squaring up your blocks, which are absolutely perfect. Um, the one thing that lots of us love about creative grids and the reason I champion them over most other ruler companies is the non-slip grip. And this one does have the non-slip grip. If your, if your ruler is sliding all over your fabric, you're probably more likely to cut inaccurately and also potentially lose the safety that we all know we need when we're talking about working with a rotary cutter. Um, now, this was designed actually uh, by the same lady, um, Gudrun L. Erla, 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 Good Renella, um, who is also uh, the, the author of the books that we're looking at. So they work really in conjunction. Now, the difference is those of you who have seen the, maybe the original stripology and haven't seen the XL, there's been a few changes to it. So some of the main changes are the two dashed lines that are going, or three dashed lines, I should say, that are going to the left hand side of the zero mark. You can see there's a quarter inch dash, there's a half inch dash, and there's a three quarter inch dash. And then obviously that then is another quarter of an inch. So if you wanted to make a cut on the end of the ruler, you absolutely can. Those dash lines go all the way, all the way round the whole perimeter of your ruler. Um, it's a big, slightly bigger size than the original one. It's still got 20 slots, which means that you're going to be able to cut your full half meterage with ease and precision really accurately without having to move your fabric without having to move your ruler um, it also the new edition also has a 45 millimeter angle coming from the top and a 60 millimeter angle 60 degree sorry and a 45 degree angle coming from both angles plus the uh, squaring up option which i'll go through in a moment so first of all you need to square up your fabric i've already i've already done that but make sure that as Jewel says, line your fabric up on your cutting mat, um, fold, it, um, fold it in, so I've got the fold at the bottom, I've got the salvage there, and then you always want to line your fabric up with the solid line that you can see running along the bottom of the ruler. You'll be able to see it really clear, there you go, you can see that black line. You line your fabric up on your cutting mat, always use your cutting mat, and of course make sure you get a big enough cutting mat that will, um, that will hold the whole of your stripology. That's when I needed to upgrade my cutting mat. Um, so the first cut that you'll always make will be on the zero line, just to make sure that you've got a nice square edge. Now I've got quite a few layers. You can layer up as much as you're comfortable with. Between each of these markings, there is a slot that your rotary cutter eases into. It starts with a little teardrop shape and eases in, which means you can cut Without having to um, move your fabric, without having to move your ruler, you can move. Re you can cut really safely and accurately. Obviously, this is a very, very sharp blade, and I know a lot of people who may be a bit wary of using rotary cutters. With this, you know that you're in that groove. Once you're in that groove, you're absolutely fine. So that's cut away, absolutely perfectly, and you can see that I've now got this lovely, lovely clean edge along the first zero line. Another great feature, now every single slot is marked with, I say every single slot, they're all marked going up in half inch increments. But then underneath that, there is a one and a half inch next to, in fact, let me put this fabric underneath and you'll see a bit clearer. So there's a little key that says one and a half inch cuts is a star, two and a half inch cuts is a square and you can see that you can follow each of these if you're wanting to cut two and a half inch strips which we we're talking about in the last hour you can just simply go two and a half i know i need to cut i know i know I need to cut at all the squares start at zero square 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 and go right across the full width of your fabric and cut all of those strips very very accurately and extremely quickly without having to do any maths so Let's do two inch strips today. So if we cut at two, just because I know my two times table, four, let's go six, eight, 
I could carry on and carry on, but I'm not going to be wasteful of this fabric because it's gorgeous fabric and someone else might want to use it. So I've still got my square here. Check that it's nicked. I know that we've got a... Um, I probably need to change my blade on the rotary cutter. I should have just checked before. But just be careful, obviously, if you're going freehand. Elliot was saying earlier, oh, can you go freehand with a rotary cutter? I'm not very good at it. But if it just nicks a couple of the fibres, I have gone through more layers than I probably normally would at home, to be honest. But just for telly, obviously, you can just cut and you will get lovely, accurate strips. So I've gone through loads and loads of layers. How many have I got here? Uh, four layers. Four layers. By all means, you can go through as many as you're comfortable with. As I say, I generally sort of tend to go through two layers or so. I've gone through four today. So if I imagine then I can open this out. If you then line all these up, you've got plenty of markings the whole way across the ruler. So you can then lie all of your strips and cut again. And you can sub cut into squares. If you imagine all your strips are then laid there. Cut into squares, you can cut your squares into triangles. There's so many options of what you're going to be able to do. You can also use these lines which are on the sides here, which are a 60 degree line and a 45 degree line. If I line this up onto the 60 degree line, and line that up, uh, where's my line? There we go, line, line, line. It's because my fabric isn't straight, there we go. Line this up along your line. Spend a bit more time than me. I'm still going to cut at the, um, the zero to start with. And then because I did two inch strips, I'm going to go two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. 18, there we go, and then I have got diamonds, I've got all of these diamonds, now there's lots of patterns that call for, for diamonds, you can use these for, for lots of different projects you could make, you could then use these, sorry, you could use these for then six point stars, You can use these, you could do tumbling blocks if you're using your lights and your darks and your shades. If you imagine you do like tumbling blocks with them. There's so much that you can do with diamonds. But because obviously you've then got the square element there, you can also square off your blocks. I'll talk about that in just one second. Imagine then you've got your diamonds. Obviously you can cut those again and you've got equilateral triangles. Or one of my favourite things to do... You ready for this, Elliot? What do you think I'm gonna what do you think I'm gonna do? I have no idea. So you can again layer up as many as you want. Just make sure they're all lined up. Um, and I'm gonna put that onto, let's go five, one of the solid lines on here. And you could do loads of these at a time. And I'm gonna go one inch either side of my five line, which is running through the centre. Five and four. I've got triangles and I've also got a hexi. So there, you're ready to do hexes. You can do really, really lovely uh, designs with this. You can make bigger hexes. You could do EPP. Don't just think you're limited to doing strips. There is so much that you're going to be able to do. So when you're squaring up the blocks, um, it's very versatile, isn't it? It is very versatile indeed. If I spin this round, it's got the turnaround feature, which most creative grid rulers do. Loads of you have checked out on this, by the way, just so you're aware, it's back in stock today. And we have waited ages to be able to get this in. It does everything. So then, here we've got our option to square up. You can tr trim your block sizes from four and a half inch right up to 12 and a half inch. So can you see these really lovely solid white lines? Um, it's very, very quick and very, very easy to be able to there's your crosshair through the centre. You've also got your diagonal lines through the uh, centre of your blocks. So you can really, really accurately square up any of your blocks. These are all four and a half inch. If you're thinking, but I've got a solid eight inch block, spin it around again. Can you see in the black lines here, you probably can't see as well. Let me put the fabric underneath. And underneath you have got real solid black lines to be able to do your squaring up on your three inch, 
four inch, five inch, six inch, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, up to twelve inch. I absolutely love this ruler. It isn't one that you will, um, you know, use for one or two projects. You will use this for virtually, if not all, of your cutting. And I can't recommend it enough. Those of you that have not yet got one, get a stripology in your life. You'll absolutely love it. It's sixty-one pounds and ninety-nine pence. There are so many instructional videos on websites. They've got a little QR reader on the, the front packet uh, when you get it. Don't throw that away because it is an instruction booklet. It will come with a little pack that um, it's got a QR reader, which will take you to YouTube. Type in Creative Grid Stripology Ruler and you will be able to, um, you will be able to watch any tutorial videos. There's loads and loads and loads online. It's brilliant. Congratulations if you got yours. Congratulations. Very excited that it's finally back in stock. Finally back in stock. We also have the mini. Now, they work hand in hand. Um, I remember once when we were talking to one of our, our guest designers and saying, uh, do you need, who will be here soon? Very excited. Uh, let me just grab some scissors and trim this up. Um, we've got... Uh, anyway, I had a project where one of our guest designers already had the stripology ruler and she was sent the mini and I said, did you need both? And she says, do you know what? I didn't realise how much I would use the mini actually as well as, because when you've done all of your main cutting, to do your sub cutting, this is ideal. And there are also lots of extra markings as well. So if I just put this uh, underneath so you can see those markings clearly, Exactly the same as before, it's got the slots between each of your half inch increments. It's also still got your guide to cut one and a half inch strips. If you're working from pre-cuts like fat quarters or your charm packs, we've been talking lots about pre-cuts today, this one is going to be the ruler for you. It's perfect to cut from, from pre-cuts. So, you've also got an extra dash line through the centre, which is this turnaround feature spin it round, the zero line has now moved across slightly, so then it means that we are cutting every, well, it's still every half inch, obviously, but it's in quarter of an inch increments, so uh, in quarter of an inch measurements. So this is where sometimes I get a bit bamboozled. If you need to cut certain sizes, three eighths of an inch, and you're thinking, right, I don't know where that is, of course, you know that you'll need to butt your fabric along the zero line, and you cut along the three and a quarter, is that right? Three and a quarter inch, and then you'll get three and, and, and um, three and two eighths, three and two eighths, because you've added, you see that, you've added your quarter of an inch. Um, so then also, you can still do your squaring up of your blocks. Can you see that you've got right from two inch up to your six and a half inch blocks, really really quickly quick uh, really really uh, carefully and accurately you can cut uh, some of the more intricate sizes along the side they've got two dashed lines so obviously i've shimmered it over for a quarter of an inch cut but today they've also well I say today they also added with the stripology mini today only they've added <laughs> we're going to rub it off off today no i'm only joking but it, it will stay there they've also added uh, the eighth of an inch and three eighths of an inch, because how often do you get patterns that say, right, you need two and three eighths, and you need this many of them, and uh, of squares or triangles or, or whatever it is that you need to cut. And sometimes it's really, really difficult to, to work out exactly how to cut that on your ruler. Whereas here, you can put the end of your fabric onto the three eighths. If you need to cut two and three eighths, obviously you would cut along the three eighths line, line that up with a, a nice clean edge and then cut at the two and you've got two and three eighths really quickly and easily and efficiently without having to do any maths of working out points on your ruler. Um, sometimes small but mighty, packs a punch, still got great accurate markings, still got your non-slip grip. So the non-slip grip isn't a sticker, it's not something that's going to come off. They're all frosted parts between every single slot that will mean it will still glide over your fabric, but as soon as then you apply pressure, it will engage those, uh, those sort of non-slip grip properties and mean that you're not going to be slipping and sliding all over the place. Whereas lots of other rulers, you might need to buy stickers, which you never know could get your fabric sticky. Uh, 
this is perfect. Now, I know at the moment we're not thinking about classes and going anywhere, but if you are thinking of being on the move or doing, you know, smaller cutting, then this is going to be absolutely ideal. So they're the non-slip grip frosted parts on the back on the reverse of the ruler. £36.99. That's your mini stripology ruler. Do not forget, the XL is back in stock. There are so many of you that have got it in your basket. Uh, Please do not, yeah, don't let it intimidate you because there's there's a lot of markings on there, but actually it's really, really user-friendly. And once you break it down, and especially if you've got any of the instruction, um, any of the books to do projects from it, that would be a really good way to get to know your stripology as well. And then you'll start to think, oh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Um, the stripology squared would work really well with the uh, stripology XL as well because it does have that element of the, um, of course, the, the, the squared part of it. Brand new in today, it's been extremely popular. £32. So, in here, you have Polygon City, Prisms, Eclipse, Fractions. There's such beautiful, beautiful quilts. And right, let me show you the instructions. So, good thing about this book. Yes, you've got lots of gorgeous quilt books. We've just seen a lovely quilt book in the last hour from Alice Quilty. But what is great about this is it is designed with using your stripology ruler. If you've got the squared one, brilliant. But it says, having a creative grid 60 degree ruler is helpful for making this quilt, but not necessarily, it's not necessary. So if you haven't, you can still make these quilts, but it does help if you have. Now, the stripology ruler that we were looking at, the Excel, does have a 60 degree line, so you'll be absolutely fine to make this. And you can make a crib, a lap, a twin, a full, or a queen size quilt, and it will give you all of the fabric requirements and the cutting instructions for all five sizes. Written by the same um, the same lady that actually designed the stripology rulers, and she's done lots of videos on YouTube as well. So it's definitely worth having a look on there. But what's great about it is that you get the actual sort of pictures of the ruler as well so you can physically lay it exactly the same as before they've also got by the way the triangle this is the 60 degree triangle ruler which is very 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 popular indeed i think it's on the website if you want to grab that but it does give you different ways of using it if you don't have it they've got the templates so don't worry now you've noticed all of our, stripo uh, our stripology rulers are on ruler racks this is a big ruler rack um, we have got the small one. I don't even know whether, um, is that the small one? The big one. So, buy the big one. I'd normally, um, I'd normally talk about the smaller one first, but it's got five slots to be able to pick any, to be able to slot any of your lovely large rulers. If you are starting to build up a bit of a collection, then this is perfect. It holds the Excel absolutely fine, you can see. Maybe if you are having it on um, a desk ready to go, then this is absolutely perfect. It's about storing your rulers correctly. Obviously, they're expensive. You spend a lot of hard-earned money uh, investing in these rulers, and you want to look after them. We don't have, to, we don't want you to come in and have to buy another stripology ruler. We want this one to last the test of time and for you to love it. So, looking after it is is key. Uh, storing it flat. So, if you don't have a ruler rack, store it under, you know, store it flat somewhere under the sofa or somewhere like that. But if you can, this is a great way. Of being able to store it. It's a mill wood, it's solid wood, it's got little um, pads on the feet as well, so uh, I say on the feet, on the base, so that you're protecting your surface and protecting your, your table. Now also, I'm just going to show this, but this just shows you how great the value for money is on the big one. This is literally half the size. The small one is half the size, one less slot, it's got four slots, and it's 10.99, it's a pound less. This one, at 10.99, I would be saying, if you're going to expand your, your ruler stash, get the big one for a pound more, great value for money. This one, just so you know, um, it maybe you don't have the space, you've got a smaller space to do it, you've only got a couple of rulers, and you're happy to have the small one. £10.99, which is still great value for a lovely solid wood uh, ruler rack. 
It's got the same little pads as the big one. Just so you're aware though, the big one is extremely, extremely limited. We've only got three left, did you say? Three. Three of the big one at 11 99 I can't get it out the box for some reason. It's, it tends to be, there we go. Thank you. So the little sticky pads at the bottom are gonna protect your, your surface. Um, we have one of each in our studio. So you've got the little pads at the bottom and then you've also got the four slots and your lovely Millwood branding. So you know that it's quality, solid wood, uh, great place to store your rulers. But if you do just want the smaller one, it's only £10.99. The larger one's £11.99, which is double the size. Brilliant. We're doing a, a gift show tomorrow. I am, of course, aware non-essential shops are closing tomorrow and lots of us are worrying that, are we going, I went, I went and got some Christmas shopping yesterday because I thought, and I'm, I'm not very organised. I'm, yeah, I'm normally mad dash Christmas Eve kind of gal, but I thought, I'm, I think we're all a bit uncertain of what's going to happen. And if you are thinking of gift ideas, we're going to get you all kitted out um, tomorrow's show. But this is a little bit of a sneak peek of what we have to come in our shows tomorrow. So this would be a great gift for somebody. And I love it because it's useful. You can use it with your rotary cutter. You can keep it in your pencil case. It says, I love my quilting friends on it. So if you know somebody that um, maybe you haven't been able to see for a while or you used to go to quilting classes with or a teacher or a friend that you share a, a sewing hobby with, this is really, really useful. It's from Creative Grids and it's also got non-slip grips. These hearts, are non-slip grips how amazing they're built in they're not going to peel off uh, but they are also your non-slip grips which is brilliant so what i love about this is that you've got all of your inch increments you've got your quick guide of your quarter of an inch reference point there to check your seam allowance maybe like that um, you've also got what looks like every eighth of an inch and what's this one let me check on the ruler on the uh, the mat for a second Elliot. That is every, so that's every inch, eighth of an inch. And then what's this? Every quarter of an inch, did you say? Quarter of an inch as well. So you've got all of those real key measurements there ready to go. It's one they could put in their pencil case. You could have it on a little loop. It's still with quite a thick acrylic. So you're going to be able to use this with your, with your rotary cutter. Um, it's, it's a lovely, lovely gift, isn't it? And it's a creative grid. This would be a great Secret Santa. Are we going to do Secret Santa in our bubble? The three of us. <gasps> we should do a Secret Santa here, shouldn't we? <laughs> Cat's like, as long as I don't get Elliot. Me and you, should we just buy each of the Christmas gifts, me and you, Cat? Maybe that's probably easier. <laughs> 15 pounds, 99 pence. Oh, do you do, should we do Secret Santa? I say, do you do Secret Santa here? It's our first year at Christmas, isn't it? This would be lovely. Oh, can I tell everyone or not? No, I've got to wait, I've got to wait. I've got some surprises for Christmas, which is amazing. Okay, we'll keep you entertained through November. Don't you worry, don't you worry. One other creative grid, uh, or two, I should say, which are always very, very popular, are the seam guys. Let's start with the big one. Right, I'm going to imagine... It's nearly a square. <laughs> Imagine this is a square that is cut all beautifully um, and you are drawing your, in fact, I was going to, uh, I think this one's too big to be honest. Right, let me just explain because I know we're short on time. Uh, it's Creative Grid. Because of the size of it, I wouldn't use this if I'm honest for cutting because um, from the safety aspect, where on earth am I? fingers gonna go I wouldn't want I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that it's still a lovely thick acrylic uh, plastic but uh, acrylic but you aren't gonna okay cut with it it's more of a marking tool what I would suggest is using this for when you're marking out big blocks whether you want to do that turn them into half square triangles or and you want to uh, that's that's what I think this is going to be brilliant for 
we were unsure, if I'm honest, the first time. I thought, is it a bit of a gadget? But actually, the amount of people that love it and are messaging in saying it's really, really useful indeed. If you put this into the corner, it's got a point on the end, into the corner of your block, and you mark down the centre. There's a little gap in the centre. It's also got a, a, a non-slip grip. If you're marking down the centre and then also mark either side, then you've got your sew line and your cut line through the centre. So you know that you need to cut, uh, sew uh, a quarter of an inch either side. That is a quarter of an inch either side of the pencil line that you'll put through the centre. So it's absolutely brilliant. Um, now the reason that Kat loves this is for English paper piecing. So if you imagine this is the end of your hexi and you want to... Uh, if you want to line up, so you've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance for your for your temp for your paper or your fabric, I should say. This is your this is your um, paper, you should, or your template, and you go round or for templates. Actually, we're saying English paper piecing, but e for any of your templates, quite often templates don't come with a seam allowance. This is a really really quick guide to be able to go right. I'm going to put the centre point on the raw edge, and I'm going to go a quarter of an inch around the edge really quickly and easily, and use it as a marking guide. Love that. That's your 15 inch. We also have the 9. So if you're working with smaller blocks generally, then this is your 9 inch creative grid seam guide. Um, it's got the non-slip grip. It's not going to be slipping and sliding if you're marking your seam allowance, especially as newbies. I think it's integral to be able to have, um, you know, m more sort of reference points on that quarter of an inch. If you're not an inch kind of person and you start quilting, it takes a long time to get your eye in. You know, a lot of people are talking in inches and you're thinking, whoa, 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 I'm a dressmaker. I've always been centimetres and millimetres. I don't do inches. And it takes a while to go, hang on, what does a quarter of an inch look like? What is it the same as? So this is really, really handy to have for anybody who is maybe new to quilting and patchwork. Um, but as well, I know Sally Ann Harrison really liked it. She's an experienced quilter and found them really, really useful for lots of projects. Just $14.99. Shall we do some rotary cutters? Um, have we got the little, little one? Um, did you steal some stock of the little, little one? Because this sold out yesterday with Delphine. For anybody who got the Sasha Tiger and you missed it, grab this now. Yeah, you stole it. And we, we literally had to say, I'm so, so sorry. We haven't got any more to everybody. Kat had had it in her stock. So, if you want it, if you missed yesterday's, if you got yesterday's kit, uh, this is the one Delphine was using to cut out all of those pieces for her, pl her plique. This is the rotary cutter to get. Do you know, I nearly didn't get it out of the box for us yesterday, Kat, because I thought, well, I know that that's sold out. It's not. You can get it uh, with the little Diddy um, uh, uh, blades. And Delphine suggested, because you're cutting through paper, to get some refills. We have got refills as well. Um, We've got refills, it's good at the end of your project to be able to do it and you get two replacement refills in there for £6.99. Be very, very careful, even though they're small, they're very, 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 very sharp. Delphine said it was a lot less fiddly. She does normally use a big rotary cutter, but to go around those curves and to do it freehand, she just said, take it steady, use a smaller rotary cutter and you'll be fine. She said it's worth having a couple of, um, a couple of blades there ready. Loads have gone into baskets. I'm so, so sorry. Didn't realise um, that we had any of these. I didn't know that Kat had stolen them all. There you go. You can still make the most of them. And... We didn't know that um, we had any refills either. We didn't yesterday. We said, sorry, we don't have any refills. So there you go, Cat had them. All gone into baskets. Sorry, everyone, Cat saying. They will all sell out. We've got the 28 mil. How many of the little ones have we got? 10, only 10 left. If you want it, 10 left, 10 left. And I'm not sure how many refills, but there's not many of those either. So if you do want the refills, stock up, stock up, stock up, especially if you're doing that Sasha amazing, amazing quilt. It's called Sasha, yeah. I love it. 28 mil, slightly bigger, but still would be ideal for the job if you miss out on the other one. Um, pardon, we don't have any replacement blades for this at the moment. We'll get some in. Remember, in just an, over an hour's time, we've got our second edition of Yarn Lane. Kat's very excited, it's her first show of Yarn Lane. Uh, Bex Reed is going to be joining you. Rebecca Reed will be here at 12 noon. Uh, do make sure you're, um, if you're watching online, going over to uh, 
going over to YouTube or Yarn Lane website and Facebook, you can watch on there. Uh, but of course, Sky and Freeview, stay where you are. This is a great rotary cutter because you can still get um, into the grooves on your stripologies. You're still going to be able to use it for curves. You're still going to be able to use it for lots of your um, lots of your your work. Actually, I've got one of these sizes which I use for my paper rotary cutter. So if ever I have a go, if I'm feeling daring enough to do foundation paper piecing, I will get this ruler out. Uh, sorry, this uh, rotary cutter out. So it's very very handy. My Ulfa, oh no, is available on the website. I don't think we've got it today, but it's available on the website. I say my Rolf, my, this is the studio one. It has got a tag on it saying it's for the studio. Uh, but it's 45 millimeter blade with the safety catch. Um, it's got the soft grip and it does secure, completely lock away, which I, I think is brilliant. So that's available as well. We've got some 45 millimeter blade refills. Those of you that uh, are starting to feel that your fabric is slashing or not cutting, like my stripology was just then. It won't mean that you need to buy a whole new rotary cutter. Get yourself some replacement blades, which you can then sharpen. Eight pounds, 99 for 45. Um, if you think you have to change your needle every eight hours or so, or every project, if you're doing lots of cutting for a big quilt, then you probably will find your rotary cutter will blunt, especially if you're starting to do uh, cutting through paper, whether it be foundation paper piecing or, or, or doing lots of you know, bonder web or things like that, you'll probably find that it blunts a lot quicker. So this is really, really handy to be able to have, especially through the next month or so. Good to have. You're getting a pack of three for eight ninety nine. dollars uh, When using a rotary cutter, it's very, very, very important, obviously, that we are um, safe, that we are using our rotary cutters very, very safely. One of the main reasons I love the rotating cutting mat is for the safety. Two, because it makes life so much easier, so much quicker when you're not having to move your fabrics and you're not having to move your rulers, you're not having to move everything around. But mainly, if you imagine, you're cutting your block, you can cut away from yourself once, you then can leave your fabric exactly where it is, you're not going to have to move it, but you can spin the mat around and make a second cut without having to do any funny angles with your body or, or, or you know, having to cut towards yourself, which you never ever want to do. It also works brilliantly with the mini stripology. Um, fits on really nicely, so if you want to whiz from, from quarter of an inch to, um, if you want to whiz from quarter of an inch to your uh, half inch, cuts then you can really 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 easily without having to move your, your fabric or your ruler which is very handy indeed um, but we do love these they're, they're always very popular it's the only rotating cutting mat that we have in stock it's got like a, a foamy sort of base so it's not going to be slipping and sliding over your over your workbench and it will just do a full 360 spin round nice and easily and nice and efficiently most of our guests, you know, so many guests who come in and ask for this every single time they're in. It's very, very popular indeed. It's just $32.99. Do not forget, the XL is back in stock today. The Stripology XL, we are very, very pleased. It's finally, we've waited for so long to be able to get this back in. It's $61.99. Uh, it's, a, uh, I know, a huge favourite of yours, a huge favourite of mine. And for anybody who hasn't yet experienced it, it will cut out so much of your cutting time. Uh, I think that Creative Grid actually claim they say that it's, it's, it's designed to cut out 75% of your cutting time. It's not just going to be for one project. This is going to be for lots and lots and lots and lots of projects. Combines all of the features of the original Stripology and the Stripology Squared. So this is like the new ultimate Stripology ruler for £61.99. pence. Just make sure that you get a big enough cutting mat for it because I only had one of the small Ulfa ones and it wasn't big enough. So you need to make sure that you've got one that's larger than, than the ruler. So larger than, um, I think it's 20, 22 inches with the, the perimeter. So if you've got one that's 24 inches or bigger, you'll be fine. This Millwood one's great. It is on the website and it also will be sent out to you with that one postage and packaging of 3 95 Now, 
brand new book is on pre-order and flying out already. It doesn't surprise me, especially with us all spending lots of time at home this month. Of course, this is going to be a lovely project to be able to do. What about the nice little Christmas gifts? And you, really useful gifts as well. Whenever I think of hand embroidery, I always think of, you know, sampler pieces on the wall. Whereas actually, Jules is going to show you how you can incorporate this into all of your sewing projects. So, we're going to be launching the book. It's on pre-order. Check out as soon as you can over the next few minutes. Jules is going to be with me right after this short break. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So, number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual. Always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. 
I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learned lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Welcome back, welcome back. We've got, remember, an hour until Yarn Lane, second show. Uh, it's our brand new sister show, which is dedicated to all things knitting and crochet. And Rebecca Reed, who has been knitting for years and years and years, and crocheting for years and years, and she's brilliant. She's gonna be here uh, in the next hour with lots of amazing tools to get us all kitted out, ready for lockdown. So if you do want to start knitting and crocheting, today's gonna be the day to do it. Um, but remember, you do need to jump over to Yarn Lane's website if you're watching us on the web. Still on Freeview and Sky, we're still the same place, but you'll find them on their Facebook, um, YouTube and online. Now, if you want to get into embroidery, I know so many people who have recently gotten into hand embroidery. And I don't know that whether that's because of the events that have happened this year and we all... There's one thing I've taken away from it is I've always lived a very, very chaotic, fast-paced life. And I've learnt to slow down. And I have, and I think it's really, really important. Everything is a million miles an hour. Um, I'm always talking about quick projects and sewing really quickly. And just my life is generally just racing here. You often see me from here racing over to Jewelry Maker, then to everywhere, and I'm hither and everywhere. And it's actually taught me to slow down. And I think it's really, really important in our lifestyles to sit and do something that is mindful. And I can't think of anything better than doing something like hand embroidery. It's a beautiful, beautiful skill to learn and we're gonna break it down with Jaws today. So this is a brand new book. And what I love about it as well is that it isn't just all flowers and you know lots of embroidery books are beautiful don't get me wrong I mean some beautiful books out there but maybe you want to embroider for your friends or your family or children or get somebody else um, in the house sewing and this is brilliant because it's really contemporary so you've got some really really cool designs in here and how to incorporate them into more than just wall art or more than just um, you know having them on greetings cards there's so much that you can do with embroidery whether that be um, putting them onto jackets or whether it be incorporating into your bag making there's so much you can do so embroidery basics if I'm starting out a new hobby don't get me wrong, I'm sure that along my journey I'm going to start looking at all of the other gizmos and gadgets and things and, and, and expand my stash. But when you're starting, you want to know, right, what are my basic tools? What do I need? So all of your basic tools are there. No, uh, no gizmos or, uh, you know, gizmos? Uh, <laughs> gadgets. <laughs> or no sort of, uh, you know, jazzy things. Everything that you're just going to need is essentials, basically. And it will go through, literally step by step, everything that you're going to need. How to transfer your design there's a whole section talking about transferring before you're starting stitching so how to put it into your hoop how to to get going with any stabilizers you might need and then look at how clear this is because of the photography and the amazing photography in this book and the, the also the pictorial stitches running stitch back stitch stem stitch split stitch chain stitch, satin stitch, French knot, they're all broken down really, 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 really clearly. Sewing basics, things that you might need, maybe you've already got the rotary cutter and scissors and things in your stash, because also this isn't just hand embroidery, they're gonna tell you how to make the bags that you can embroider. So embroider your apparel. Have you got an old denim jacket that, you, that might have had, um, you know, it, it needs a bit of a judge. I'm all up, I'm definitely in uh, the mindset, we all are, aren't we? A bit thinking more about sustainability, reuse, um, upcycle. This is such a great way of doing it with a beautiful denim jacket. I mean, that looks incredible, doesn't it? And how to do it on, on your, how about on pumps, trainers, personalising things, canvas shoes, 
These would be lovely. I'm, I'm desperate to, um, to do cats. She's got her pumps on today. This is what we're looking at today. Aprons, always very, very useful indeed. But then how, again, to uh, mix and match all of these different patterns that you can put on. Let your craft flag fly. Love it. So, again, bag making, pencil cases, storage boxes, drawstring bags with the cactus. It's just so cool, isn't it? Uh, your coffee cosy. How many embroidery designs are in here? 50. 50 designs. Love this. You rock. That'd be a lovely um, gift to send somebody in the post, isn't it? A nice card that they then keep. Especially for all of our Gemporia friends. Um, embroidered oh yeah and my best friend cherry <laughs> embroidered notebook i've got loads of projects in here that i'd love to do uh, fabric cuff jewelry there's loads in here mini hoops you've still got some lovely ideas that you will definitely be able to still stitch for christmas you don't need to worry about doing a huge sampler but just doing little elements on tea towels what about old tea towels um or you know new tea towels that are just plain how about embroidering things onto um i'm thinking as well pillowcases you've got plain bedding or you know you can do you can just upcycle and change the look of them completely coasters these are adorable Little collage, there's loads. Decorative pillows. You've then also got your stitch guide of how uh, to do them. So what they're made up of. For example, the cupcake is made up of chain stitch, setting stitch, back stitch, and a back stitch to fill all. So they say what size hoop you're going to need, how to do it, the ones that you're going to, what stitches you're going to know how to do. But even the mini flower, if you're just starting with this, that's just a back stitch. How effective. So we love, love, love this book. All of your transferable templates are there too. There's instructions in the book of how to iron these on, but we will go through with Jules as well how to use this. So we've got two bundles to work with today. The book is separate at $23.99. Just in case you've already got lots of skeins or you've got a different project in mind that you want to make. Oh no, what have I done here? Um, right. I always do this. I can never get things back in the packet, ever. Uh, let's start with the grey. So the grey linen comes with a huge array of embroidery skeins. And don't get me wrong, as you progress on your embroidery journey, you might then choose to purchase different skeins. You might look at DMC or you might look at different um, brands. Whereas this is so affordable to be able to get all of these skeins. I mean, normally you're looking at a pound or two a skein anyway. Whereas with this bundle for $24.99, you're getting 36 loads of colours to be able to have a real good dive into the book. Uh, there's another layer in the centre there, which I can't get to, but you've got greens and blues and greys and like a bright turquoise in there as well. You're also getting some fabric. So to make the apron, a metre of linen, that's loads. You're getting loads of linen, which is gorgeous. This would be nice for a bag as well. This is gorgeous. You then also get your blue cotton chambray fabric, which is gorgeous as well. Half a metre of this one. Plenty enough to be able to do the apron, which um, which you can see on the mannequin. But it would also be lovely to have a bit of a try with maybe the drawstring bag or, I mean, any of the projects in the book. There's loads that you're going to be able to get out of this bundle. The other bundle that we have before we go over to Jules is the denim. So this is the denim coloured linen. <laughs> Just to confuse thought, it's 100% uh, linen and it's absolutely gorgeous. Again, great to be able to have this with uh, for your apron or drawstring bags. I mean, you're going to be able to make loads with it, absolutely loads. Plus, you've then got your chambray as well and all of your skeins. Same colours as before. You're able to make, I mean, loads. You'll make this, but you'll also have so much left over to make whatever you want from the book or whatever you've got in your, you know, if you're thinking of bags for your stash. So $24.99, it's going to go a really, really long way. It is going to go a long way indeed. Look at that cake. I love the colours that yours has used. There's some beautiful, bright really colours nice in here. Yeah. Really nice. If you've got any questions, by the way, about embroidery, get them in over the next 40 minutes or so. I'm on Facebook Live, so I'll keep an eye on the Facebook Live stream. The, any questions you've got for Jules, get them in. Uh, Sewing Street TV is our Facebook page. Or, of course, you can email Kat, studio at sewingstreet.com or drop her a message on the website. Uh, I'll go through the other tools as we get to them with Jules, if that's okay. I want to spend as much time 
doing some nice slow sewing. <laughs> it is something that I think, especially the winter nights during uh, that are drawing in, I think this is a lovely, lovely yeah. little hobby to take up. It's very nice. And I, was, I think I was saying to you earlier, sometimes you've got your machine out and you know you can be busy, you can be noisy, but sometimes you can't. Yeah. And so this is quite nice to have just on the go. At the same time as something else, you know, we've all got lots of things. But you're not go. very good at just sitting and not doing no, something with your hands, are you? No, no. And I know a lot of sewers <laughs> will, will agree, yeah. even if they're going away, they say, I have to take something with yeah, me. Yeah, there'll to, always to be, be something to. somewhere around. Yeah, 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 no, that's good. And actually, I'm a bit jealous. Because look, you've got the chambray. I didn't get the chambray. So you just had linen, and I mean, I you've just made had linen, which was beautiful to work with. I really and you get liked loads that. Of it. Yeah, yeah, got loads of it. And also, it's such a nice weight when you've got it on that apron because that's double sided. It, it just is such a nice weight. You oh, know, lovely. you could use the corner of it on your. Yeah. Oven, you know, not you've got to be careful, obviously, with heat, but it's it's thick enough to do that, I think. Is it good to um, for anybody who hasn't sort of done too much embroidery before? Is linen a good one to to yeah, use as, it's, a, as a background? It's a nice firm fabric. It's okay. a nice stable fabric. You um, obviously you're going to have the transfers, but you could, if you wanted to, you could use stitch and tear. If you don't want to spoil your book, for yeah. example, you could use stitch and tear, or you could use the wash away. I've got wash away okay. today. Um, but yeah, it's a nice stable fabric to actually yeah. sew on to. Um, some of your cottons are a little bit too fine and you would mm -hmm. have to put something underneath it yeah. as well. But So yeah, it's good. Um, the other thing about it as well, it sews up really nicely. It's, you know, you don't have to press it too much. It's got yeah. a nice kind of feel yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's good. Beautiful, beautiful. So first thing I suppose you need is an embroidery hoop, isn't it? You do indeed. I've got a few different sizes. I think you've got yeah. a couple of different We've sizes We've got a couple of there. sizes. So, I mean, where, how do you need to have all of your projects sort of in a... How no. much of your project do you need to have in the hoop? So on the uh, apron, it's just the pockets. So you'll have cut your apron pieces and you'll have two eight by eights, which I've got here. Uh, and those are the pockets. So um, for the little motifs that I'm going to do today, that is fine. So this what is you 5.8 inch. So a majority of the the, the designs a lot in the that book will fit, yeah, are a lot that fit will in fit that. into there. Um, what you would need to do, I mean, I've I've printed off mine because of, of how we worked, but um, whatever the size of whatever it is that you're going to have, so you'll have the transfer. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you've got a good border around it, so that when you've got your hoop, for example, I've got the cactus in this one, when you've got your hoop, you've got enough to be able to pull it nice and tight. Right. So if I've just, I'll just loosen the small one off. This is how you open and close them. You've got like a little screw on yeah. the top of yours. Yeah. So it'll be two pieces. So pretend we didn't do anything yet. So you've got, two, oh, I've got stitches underneath. So you've got um, the inner piece mm -hmm. and then the outer piece. You take the inner piece and you lay your fabric across it. Yeah. Uh, you put it quite tight, like a drum. Yes, exactly. So if you lay your, so you've got your motif um, pretty much in the centre of it, and then you lay your outer hoop on the top and push it. Start to tighten it, and then just make sure, just by pulling the gently, not hard because you don't want to distort the fabric, but gently until you can screw the top up. And it's it's pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah taught. Pretty taught. So uh, you know, you what point do you do this? Like, do you cut your pattern pieces first? Do you construct your uh, you know your pattern together, or so it'll depend on what you're doing. So, yeah. for example, if you're doing your denim jacket, it's already done. You're not going to be cutting that up at all. No. So you want the bigger hoop. Okay. Because you want to get enough oh, yeah. of the jacket in there. What you don't want is to yeah. have things flopping underneath. So that when you're sewing through, you inadvertently catch another piece of, of okay. the fabric. So if you have your hoop big enough to push it either side, yeah. then that's better. And also, if you're just starting out, you might find something like this is maybe too small. Okay. You can get a, to get a reasonable grip. So you might want to go for the mid size or the big size. It, it's just how comfortable you feel. Okay. But there will be projects where you need the big one. There will also be projects where you need the small one. Worth getting both. Yes, I think so. Worth um, getting both. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're a good price anyway. They're six six pound forty nine for the big one. I think the small one was only three pound ninety nine. So if you've played your P and P, definitely yeah, worth getting, getting both. both of them. And, and then you can. This is a travel one, whereas this one is a sitting at home and. Yeah, you know, that's you, it. You've got things on the go, um, but I would say with the apron, you cut the pockets out anyway. 
Um, you don't want copious amounts of fabric. So for example, this is the, the apron piece. If I had to stitch on that, um, again, I'd Get have the, the big hoop. I just want to maybe fold it over and clip yeah. it out the way. Um, it depends what you're sewing on to, really. I mean, obviously, the shoes, the trainers that are in there, you wouldn't use a hoop right. because it's stiff enough. You okay. can actually hold it. The reason that you've got your hoop is so that the fabric is stiff enough to, for you to make your stitches through right. it. Right. Okay, that so makes it, sense. So it just depends on your project. So it didn't answer your question no, definitively, it did. It but did. it gave you a broad Absolutely. spread on it. So like you say, there's no right and wrong. Is no, there? no. And it's if you like the small hoop, use a small hoop. The only thing that I would say is if I was to use a small hoop on the bigger project, so if I was using a small hoop on this, I would have to keep moving it, which means that I would also have the ring where the fabric has ah. been pushed out of the way, um, which maybe won't look quite so nice. But if you've only got the small one, that's the one that you'll use. Now, that's not going to damage my fabric, is it? It's not going to no. warp my fabric by no. it being um, you know, quite taut. No, because even though you're pushing over it, you're not really yanking it. You're not yeah. breaking the fibres of the fabric you're just pushing it down yeah. securely so it'd be like pressing a seam yeah exactly you can unpress a seam can't okay. you so it's the same sort of thing yeah brilliant thank you okay um so if you are doing it onto the apron the apron's a very simple um uh, construction really you've got one piece of the, your main piece of fabric is one big piece of fabric which you halve it so your um apron is double You'll have two straps. Uh, the trick with the straps is when you sew them together, in the book, um, she tells you to snip off a 45 diagonal first before you sew it. I wouldn't. Right. I would sew it across the 45 diagonal first to make your pointed end. Oh, yeah. Then sew it down and then turn it through. Once you've turned it through and pressed it, this is the trick with it, where you've folded. So I've got right side to right side of my apron. And I will be putting the um, strap into the apron pocket. Right. So just to be aware of that, because if you put it outside, your strap will be inside the. So it'll be the wrong way round. Oh, let's put it around so I can see how the strap is. Oh, I see what yeah. you mean. So you Absolutely. want it sewn into the seam. Yeah. But you want it so that when you turn it the right way out, and this is the right way out, you have still got your strap. Right. Yeah, that makes pocket. sense. Yeah. Uh, and then literally, you sew it around so down the short side and stop and then about four inches and then start again and up the other side so that you've got turning gap turn it through and then top stitch it okay apron done oh brilliant all you've then got to do is stitch the pocket on once you've embroidered the pocket so it's a very easy construction um, so you can so spend all that time doing your nice hand sewing embroidery yeah. and if you want to knock up a few of these for mm. christmas yeah so great. easy just yeah just do it. So what I thought I'd do is I have, um, because we, I didn't want to spoil the book, I haven't used the iron-on transfer. Those transfers, by the way, you don't just use them once. Right, you so it's not going to disappear like, you know, those old tattoos that you put on a transfer no. and it disappears. You could probably get, I don't know, half a dozen out of it. Okay, really. yeah. oh, brilliant. So, and on the dark fabric, it's a light transfer, so it, it really does transfer well, if you yeah. see what I mean. Yeah. Um, if you were a bit unsure, you could use the chambray for the pockets, and Absolutely. that's lighter still. Yeah. If you didn't want to um, use the transfer out of the book, I've got wash away here, but you could also have stitch and tear. The only thing you've got to remember is um, with the stitch and tear to make sure you've got your transfer the right way round. Ah, uh, um, yeah. Um, yeah. But that's, that, that's the only thing really. Those are all reversed so that when you iron them on. Uh, it's the correct way round. And also, what I thought is they won't, even if, right, so it will iron on a good few times, yeah. but then when it stops to iron on, the picture itself won't go anywhere, so you can then just trace it. You can transfer yeah. it, trace yeah. it. Or if you're not sure about that, if you want to photocopy it beforehand, if you've yeah. got that facility, you could do that as well. Yeah, perfect. So, yeah, there's lots of ways around. Yeah, so you've got loads of uses for those. But all the little um, stitches, it's really good because she'll say... Um, so, for example, there's lots of little notes on my one, but, for example, on here, um, it tells you that this piece here has got to be a chain, um, a back stitch, and this piece yeah. here has got to be a chain oh, stitch. Oh, I love that. And this bit has got to be the satin stitch. So, she'll go through for each of the items, uh -huh. what's what. Oh, and that's I just, really good. just made little notes as to what colour I'd want, because you don't 
have to use the same colours as I've done. You can, yeah. I mean, there are suggested colours on there, but if you want to do something funky. Oh. And you get 36 skeins. Exactly. I couldn't believe how many was in that packet. I just thought, Hoo -hoo, what shall I use? Oh, there's some, Amazing. Uh, there's a brilliant, brilliant value. I mean, I love these for, for toy making as well, for doing detail on faces and things. But for projects like this, when you think, right, I just want a big pick a mix yeah. of colours, yeah. you can do, it's you can lovely. go crazy. And did you get, are those both the same um, colours? They're both got? the same colours, but we have different ones oh, as well. Yeah. So I think these are, uh, eight, they're nine ninety nine on their own, which is so good, Brilliant. isn't it? Well, the one that you've just had, this that one. pastel one, is the one that I'm doing with the um, with these two. And then, what else have you got there? Have you got so they're the pastel, sorry, that are nine ninety nine, and there's loads in there. Yeah. Look at all these beautiful colours. Amazing. They're stunning. Um, we do have the bright ones that were in the kit. We also have those on their own. Uh, these are called brights. They're nine ninety nine, and then we have variegated. <gasps> See, I didn't get variegated, but I did get. <laughs> what have you got? What have I got? I got metallic. Oh, so I mean, oh, yeah, no, this there's is a metallic brilliant. on the website as well, which for Christmas, woo, brilliant. So I've got some of that. Love these. So yeah, they're really, uh, really nice to work with. They're all cotton. So you haven't got to worry too much about what you're putting them on and putting irons on top of them and all that kind of stuff. So I've got wash away here. When I washed it away, I needed to iron it again. And I wasn't worried because I've got cotton underneath. Yeah. It, you know, so it's not going to shrivel or anything like that. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd go through all the stitches that we've got in there and just give you a, a potted thing of what we've got, potted plants of what we've got. <laughs> oh, I mean, there's loads in here, so isn't there? Well, it's um, book. So we'll start off with the basic ones and then kind of go up to the French knot, which was the one at the end, I think. But each of the projects, some of them are very simple. So they'll, as you say, only use a running stitch. Some it brings in something else like a stem stitch and then there's there might be some French knots in there. So you can go as complicated or not as you want to. Mm -hmm. So this can be your stitching journey as oh, well, which lovely. is quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. So um, on this first one, uh, what I'll do is I've cheated a little bit. I have started most of them only because I wasn't sure. Oh no, it's good to be able to show how you know, long it would take to thread a needle on it. Of course, it's not but the <laughs> quickest project. <so. laughs> but when you, um, so for these we have used, and she recommends in the book, so if you're using just your, uh, any of the threads that you've got there, she'll recommend to use four strands. Okay, so these are six strands, aren't they? Yeah. The stranded cotton. So when you're taking out a strand... How do I do it without getting in a tangle? Exactly. Um, what I would do is I would cut a length. So take your strand and leave the, pa uh, the uh, pieces on. So leave okay. the wrappings on. Find your end and pull the end until you've got about that much. Okay, so from here to your elbow? Yeah, or, or and further. Thereabouts. Uh, and then what I would normally do is cut that off. And put that away, you don't need that for now. Now you've got six strands in here. So if you just tease them apart, you need to take them apart one at a time. Don't be tempted to pull two strands out because you will get in a knot. And with cotton fibres, you get in a knot quicker. So you do have to be a little bit cautious. So you're pinching all of the rest of them. So I've got all the rest in this hand, and I'm just taking one out at a time. So you do ah. that. And then when you've got two, so imagine that I've now got two strands separated here. I then want to have four. Mm -hmm. So it'll be two, and then in half will give me four. Yeah. What you'll need to do is you need to decide which way around you're going to do it. So fold them in half and decide whether you're going to thread your needle with the looped end. Yeah. Sorry, that way. That yeah. Way. Or with the four separate pieces. I'm with you. So double up on it. Double up and then decide which end you're going what, to put through the eye of the needle. What's, what, why? What's best? Doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Um, normally when I'm threading a needle, I'll get the thread. Mm hmm wrap it around the needle, pull it tight and then push it through. Yeah. So, but it doesn't matter which end. But what you will want is the loop furthest away from the eye of your needle. Okay. So I've got my loop here and I've got the end here. Right. Okay. So to start, take your project bit. Does she explain where to start in a project or what's, where is the best place to start? I think I would start on the simplest stitches. Okay. So if you've got a running stitch, no, she doesn't no, in yeah, that short yeah. answer.
but I would start with the running stitch okay. because it just gets you in the flow, yeah. it, if you see what I mean. Um, but what you don't want is you don't want knots all over the place. No. And so this will help you not have a knot. Okay. So if you, you just go to your right slightly, please? Thank you. So where your line of stitching is, where your transfer is, come up and just be careful and wait a second and don't come through with that loop. So I've still got the loop there. Okay. Go down with a little stitch. Don't worry about this being part of your design as yet because we're just going to secure the um, thread. Pull it up and where that loop is, so make sure you've got your two pieces. So that's my loop still. Mm -hmm. This is my working thread. Go underneath. Oh, that's going to make a knot. And that's nice and secure. That's a nice, neat knot as well. So it's not a bulky knot. No. It doesn't matter too much on this because it's quite thick fabric. But if you've got fine, you know, it's best to get good habits yeah. right away. Um, and then with the running stitch, literally what you're doing is I've got a line here that I'm working on. You're coming up from the back. Try and keep your stitches fairly even. And then I'm going down. I've, I've got my end still there. So I've only got four threads going through here and go down. And that is a running stitch. Come up about the same amount uh, away from the stitch as the stitch length. Up you come. And then down again. And when you get a bit more in the flow, you can go, you can do an up and down in the same movement if you want to. You don't have to, take your time, doesn't matter. Okay, so that's the running stitch. And it's literally mm -hmm. Just Up running along the fabric. There. Yeah. Um, now, if you want to do a back stitch, which will mean that we're filling in these gaps, so it's a more continuous line, um, you'll go up. So I've gone a bit further away from there. Up and then come back. Fill in the gap. Fill in the gap. Then go forward again, about the same length of stitch, and come back. And with this one, I'm just doing one more the same. So again, go up and then come back to where you ended that stitch. So it's making a continuous line. And this one you can get a little bit quicker at if you want to. So you go as you go up, you go into your fabric and then come up there at your distance yeah. away again. So that saves you going up and down in a single motion and you can keep doing that. So running stitches and back stitches are good for outlining things. Right. Also, she does what they what she calls a, a back infill. OK, so for example, on this pot, because it's a wide expanse and it's just going to be framed by a single row, um, it's almost like a confetti kind of feel. So and that's running stitches randomly dotted about so you would come in do a running stitch there go over here a bit do another one so this can be a bit randomized and just kind of um, dot them about slightly different angles so that you can see that there's a substance to that pot yeah you've used that for the cake as well haven't you for the yeah. sprinkles yeah for the sprinkles on the top so that's your Back, uh, running stitch and your back stitch. So they're fairly straightforward. So there you go. You can see that in the um, in the cake. Love a bit of cake. Oh yes, in the cake. So I'll just leave that one. And it's fairly neat still on the back. So that's your back side. That yeah, but you at. don't ever ever look at the back. No, you no. Don't look at those pockets. If anybody asks to look at the back, then so they're rude. Rude. Very rude. Don't look at my back side. No. <laughs> don't look at my back side. Um, <laughs> so they're fairly straightforward stitches. Um, those are just the normal cotton. I'll show you what they look like in, this is the metallic. Now with the metallic, which um, you should be able to find on the website, I haven't split them because if you have a look, it's almost like angel hair. Oh, nice. They're very fine. Okay. Do you need a special needle or just no. a... You can still use your same needle. You want a sort of biggish eye, Big really, eye. for them because you've got to you're going to thread all of those, and they do like to spring apart. Mm -hmm. It's a cotton um, 
uh, fabric core so you can kind of wet them, damp them if you want to, to put them through. But I've left them all together because it makes a slightly stronger line and I wanted the glitter. So on this one, um, exactly the same thing. I'm doing a back stitch. I'm doing a slightly smaller back stitch because it's a smaller project on here. But this is going to be the pocket for the apron. So these are my 8 inch pockets that right. I've got here. Um, and I've got quite a bit of, and the reason I've got quite a long piece is because it doesn't tangle so much when you've got the metallic thread. And also it's a bit of a, um, what's it to thread? <laughs> so threading it once rather than a few times is better. But again, just up and down. I'm going up to the left, down to the right, and that gives me my back stitch. So you are working back on yourself. I know you're using the wash away stabiliser on here. Mm -hmm. um, what are the benefits of using the stabilisers? We have got a pack on the website, which we had the other day with Jane, for, for the um, machine, yeah. the embroidery machine. It's a Madeira, a Madeira premium pack, and it's got sample pieces, but they're big, full sort of size pieces. And you get to try tear away, wash away, cut away, all of them, they're all there. And it's a really, really good sample pack. It's £10.99, so it's definitely worth getting hold of. Yeah. It does make a difference using stabiliser, doesn't it? It does, absolutely. Um, it just depends on what you've got okay. and what you're sewing through, basically. Um, if I'm honest, I would have preferred not to use wash away because it's um, sometimes a bit difficult. I've got really sharp needles, but sometimes it's a bit difficult because you've got the thick um, material and the thicker yeah. stabiliser so I would have preferred to use stitch and tear or something like that but I couldn't get it at the time right, I hadn't okay. got it because um, we were out of it but so I use this the um, it's a nice stabiliser as in it's firm enough but I would have preferred um, it, because I was using a, a, a good needle it was fine but this is probably better uh, on a machine as opposed to hand yeah but it's it's working so it does yeah. work uh, the thing you've got to watch out for with this is if you've not got colour fast products, as are, but supposing you haven't got colour fast products, you just need to make sure that um, what you're washing, you've got to wash it really carefully. And it does go very sticky okay. when you need it, so you've yeah. just got to be a bit careful yeah. with it. Um, the stitch and tear is really good. Yeah. So is that um, that's a bit like a paper that you would yeah, stitch that through. Yeah, there's, there's some of that in the uh, in that sampler. Yeah, so well. I would have preferred to use that if okay. I was going to use it. But yeah, it will work. It will work. So it's Brilliant. not too much of a problem. Okay, so that's our back stitch done, and that's our. There's the book, by the way. The book that we're working from today, twenty three pound ninety nine, and it's got fifty different designs. All really cool contemporary looks, actually, aren't they? They're it's really very funky, actually. I really like them. I especially like the um, skull. I've got a friend who really likes skulls. Oh, cool. So, yeah. yeah, very Alexandra McQueen-esque, isn't it? Well, I was thinking if I could get some of those very small um, frames, yeah. make her a pair of earrings. Oh, She'd cool. She'd love it, yeah. Nice. But, yeah, you can do all sorts with it. Yeah. It's really good. So now um, I'll move on to satin stitch. Okay. And this is like a filler stitch. Um, so if you've got some areas, so on the top of the cake, on the icing bit, the icing on the cake. So we see it on our machine, don't we, where it's a real tight zigzag almost, is it? Yeah. That just fills lines and lines. So yeah. on the cake picture, you'll see um, the Jules has made, the apron, um, the filler part of... The little cream on the top that's and the, the cherry, system. yeah, and the, che oh, the, and the cherry. Oh, the cherry on the other, top side. And the other yeah. side, yeah, yeah. Um, so what you would do is outline your project in the um, back stitch that we've just been doing. So go all the way around. I've got a little star here. So just go all the way around your project, the shape with your uh, back stitch. Then you're going to literally colour in. So I've done a couple. And what I would do is, instead of going around and around and around, because literally you're going from there to there, but don't go around underneath, mm -hmm. go this away instead. So if I'm going to come up here, mm -hmm. I'm filling along here, and I'm going to go to that other point piece. So down to there. But now, when I come up, I'm not going back to here, I'm going to here. Right. Because otherwise, you end up with lots of strands on the back, using a lot more um, your, uh, 
thread. cotton thread mm -hmm. then yeah it's not cotton uh, you're using a lot more thread than you need to and it looks not as neat on the back right so if you go can you imagine all the way across there you don't want to have that all the way across the back and this area is probably just about big enough to take that but if you've got a bigger area than that you might like to just do an infill so go halfway which is nice to get children sewing as well isn't it oh absolutely do your children sew uh yes of occasion then yeah. like mum will do it won't yeah. she but yes they do they say oh can i have a gold machine the middle one's my machine lady oh. she likes doing that but on this one that just means that you've anchored it in the middle as opposed to taking the strand all the way across and it, it just um looks neater really but on the back i've only done a very small stitch there so i've not gone all the way across if you do that again and the next time as opposed to going there because otherwise you'll have a line going across go a little bit further or a little bit less far and it just fills it in quite neatly so come back up there not through the same hole but very next uh, very near to it and go back down and that will fill your shapes and it looks quite effective you see on the cherry I really like that cherry yeah it, it looks really you know really good really kind of solid oh it's beautiful it's so beautiful this would be really really lovely to personalize gifts for people wouldn't it oh especially yeah. this Christmas I think we're all thinking a bit more about maybe making you know smaller projects for people that they're, 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 they'll they'll remember and cherish and look after well it's always nice to do recycling and upcycling and adding personalization on any of them I think so that's your satin stitch so we're getting through them absolutely uh, next one we'll do I think is the stem stitch and that's quite good if you're going around a curve so on here I've got this is an aloe vera plant and there's lots of curves on there I don't know if you can it's oh lovely there. pattern in it's the book one. and what I was really impressed with is each of the stitches is broken down really lovely and clearly isn't it you yeah. can see there's your stem stitch you've got your description and you've also got um, your kind of photo well it's not a drawing yeah. really but yeah it's really useful so on the stem stitch we're again stitching forwards and slightly back on ourselves if that makes sense mm -hmm. so you'll come up if you have your line see where your line is going to be so where your transfer line will be um, come up either side of the line put your needle in just above the line and bring it out again just below the line keeping your thread out of the way and then as you pull it down you'll form the stitch we'll drag it a bit closer and you can see again Oh, hang on, stay there, that's it, that's it, perfect, thank you. Sorry, there's shine on this, isn't there? Sorry about that. Um, so if you go, I've got a line going here. Yeah. So I'm going just above the line, and I'm coming out just below the line. My thread is out of the way. Have you gone below the thread as well or not? No, uh, not no. under the thread, no. And then around we go. And it's almost like uh, the stitches are stacking that way. Okay. I'm going this way, but the stitches are stacking that way. Yeah. Um, and it's quite a good one to do um, if you keep your stitches sort of fairly smallish, then it takes the curve nicely. You can go around the curve. So up and back. So it takes it around the curve. Mm -hmm. um, with something like that, it it's makes a slightly thicker than a running stitch and it's a little bit more even than a running stitch you can't see where the each stitch is or the back stitch you can't see where each stitch begins and ends right um, so it's it's more of a continuous curve mm -hmm. and you can um, turn that into do you remember oh you, I don't know if your ladies and gents watched uh, when I was doing the bird hanger uh, the yeah, wall, yeah, 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 and we did the home suite. Home. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, that was very similar to the stem stitch. Right. That was called an outline stitch. Yeah, um, but it's very similar. So if you see outline or stem stitch, this is Probably the sort the of thing, thing that you're going to get. Yeah, pretty, pretty similar. It's just where your thread goes up to. Um, so that's that one. 
and then I think we'll do the chain stitch because I've got it on here as well. So chain as it says. Uh, and again, this is another uh, outlining kind of stitch. So I've got a little rim to the pot here. Sorry, you, I've got so much shine on here. Sorry about that. We but can see, we can <laughs> see. You can see, you can see. So with the chain stitch, you choose where you're going to start. You come up, pull your thread away from you, and you're going to go back down again, almost in the same place, not quite, but almost in the same place. And then where your line is, bring your needle up to be in a place on that line. I've got this in a loop and this is what's going to cause my chain. So I want my needle up and I want my thread underneath. So you'll come back up again. And then just to finish that little loop off, I'll make a securing stitch. And that's your chain. So Do you find that it's ever handy using um, a, a, a clamp so that you're kind of hands free? Yeah. You know, like the table clamps that are good, that you're sort yeah. of going back and forth. Yeah. I mean, if you certainly if you're going to do bigger projects, you can get um, clamps with lights affixed or you can put your light next to it. Yeah. It's really useful. Yeah. It's, I, I just like the fact that you can do all the different colours. You can thread up all your needles with the different colours put it in and then pick up the next one and start another colour. Yeah. Put it back in and your hands free. The phone rings, the door goes. I'm not thinking, oh, where am I Doesn't putting matter everything? You've, yeah. Pop it in. Yeah. This one um, is a, a table clamp. I know that there is a seat clamp, I think, as well oh, on the yes. website yeah. but, uh, that you sit on. Um, but the table clamps are very, very popular indeed. These yeah. are really very ideal. Useful. As you say, they're hands free. Um, and it just means that... Uh, you can probably tackle slightly bigger projects than you might have done. Right, yeah. Uh, certainly for your bigger work, definitely something like that. Is well, you really can really sort of manipulate these. You can turn yeah. it up so you can tie off or, or do whatever you yeah. need to on the back as well, really quickly and I think easily. you can use any size hoop on there, can't you? I'm not quite sure. It comes with a 10-inch hoop. Oh, OK. So that's, um, It's a 10-inch hoop, yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure whether um, you can interchange with them. I don't think you can, if I remember rightly, but it's a 10-inch hoop. So that's quite good for all of the projects, I think, in this book. Yeah. It would be absolutely ideal. You just mentioned about light, the light. Um, you generally do any hand sewing in the evenings, don't you? Yeah. And having a good light is Absolutely. integral. You can't not. You really can't. Um, you won't see where the eye is on the needle. You'd be kind of thinking that your eyes have gone wonky. Mm -hmm. They haven't. You just need to have better contrast. If you, uh, you know, you've got other people who are living in the, in the house and you don't want to put the big main lights on, you just want to focus in on that. Yeah. I mean, these would make lovely bedside lamps, actually. This is a natural daylight. It's got the LED light, so it doesn't get hot either. And it is that natural daylight colour. It's got a little caddy. Uh, it's got a little caddy at the bottom and also some storage for some pencils or transfers. Also a really lovely flexi arm on here. Um, I would suggest make sure, making sure that you do invest in a good in a good light. This is the most affordable, actually, that we have on the website at the moment. So um, we thought that this is a good one to, to bring in, just to reduce the cost of it. I understand it's an expensive time of year, but having a good light is, um, is really, really important. Well, it'll make the difference in whether you are frustrated with your project or whether you're enjoying your project. That's it, to yeah. To be fair. Yeah, you're yeah, right. And it, it's all about the enjoyment of it, isn't it, at yeah, the moment? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, I think we've, oh, we haven't covered, a sp I haven't got a split stitch, but I can turn this chain into a split stitch. So hopefully we're happy with the chain stitch. With a split stitch, what you're doing is kind of similar to what we were doing with the chain, but going the opposite way. So you're, um, you start off with a, just a back stitch. Just right slightly. Thank you. Sorry, I keep doing this. Sorry, so, no, we hate asking you. It's hard to no, sew when right. you've <laughs> gone like this yeah. away from yourself. Start off with a back stitch, and because I've got two, uh, I've got four strands of thread, I'm going to take my needle up with that good light there. And I've got two on the right, oh, two on the top, two on the bottom. And then I'm going to come back down onto my line. And then I'm going back up again into the stitch that I've just made and again splitting the threads that I've got so I want two threads on the top and two on the bottom and coming back again so it's almost like a 
cheating chain stitch really. Can you see the difference on there? Sorry. If I'm not happy with that, can I go back? Can you just go back through the holes and take that stitch out? Yeah, you could. I mean, you could just undo that. I'm trying to loosen it off. Um, the challenge will be, because I've got a very sharp needle, I'm going into the plastic. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you can just wiggle it. And you can and undo it'll come that. out, yeah. yeah. And say, uh, the, the challenge for me is that I'm going through this plastic, but yeah, just wiggle it. Don't, don't over pull it. And then it should come out. Oops. Underneath. All of the, uh, the, the diagrams and instructions are in the book, remember? So yeah, take your time and you mm -hmm. can fix any mistakes if it's not completely final yeah. once you've done those stitches. I know. And you could always um, sew over that if you wanted to. You could just, um, you know, yeah. embellish it in that position. Yeah. It's beads. yours, isn't it? It's just yeah, I'd get my beads, seed beads sequins, down, or all sequins, sorts of stuff. buttons. I mean, this sort of thread's that. good for sequins, actually, as well, because it's yeah. thick enough to hold it in position. Because sometimes with the thinner threads, the, the sequins go all over the place. Um, so I'm here. Cherries. I love got cherries. some cherries. Now, in the book, it said black, but I thought, no, I want to go Christmassy, so it's going to be... <laughs> Christmas cherries! Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, Christmas cherries. I've never had Christmas cherries, but it could it's be a, a new thing. thing. Um, so these little stars, they're literally five small running stitches. So you'll go up with one, and literally you're just coming up and down and going down in the centre again. So one to the one side... Oh, we are nice and close. Elliot is fab with these cameras. Sorry, I'll try and keep steady. No, it's really good. <laughs> I'll give him a challenge then. And Oh, sorry. I've got too many threads here. This is what happens. There we are. And just make the middle point your focus. Yeah, I think. You got yourself in a tank, girl. <laughs> no, I've got, I've got it that side. But yes, you're right, I have. <laughs> no, I have, yes. And then sh the last thing I'm going to show you is the French knot. We've got, um, how long did you say, sorry, cats? We've got about three minutes. Oh, right, okay, so let's show you a French knot. So that's your little star. And then with your French knot, what you'll do is you'll come up. And this is one everybody gets stuck on. <laughs> it is, because... If you're doing it for the first time, looking at something, you think you go up and down in the same hole. You don't. Okay. So you come up, you hold the working thread here. Hold it out the way. You um, will then take your needle underneath okay. and go up the thread. I've got the thread twice. Oops. And then hold this. Here. Keep your tension. Keep your tension and come down very close to it, but not in the same position. And as you go down, just make sure that this is firm. So you're causing the knot around your needle. Uh -huh. So you come down, pull it through, keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, and let go. There you go. And you've got your French knot. Got and French they knot. are so beautifully, they add such great texture, yes, don't they? they I do. love French knots. Yeah, they These do. are my favourite. Yeah, they're lovely. But yeah, it's very straightforward, but you just have to remember when you go back down again, you don't go through the same hole. Okay. You've got to have some purchase. Yeah. And did you wrap around twice then? You yes. Because it's quite thick. I come up and yeah. go around twice. Just up. Go around twice. Hold this. Next to it, oh, forget it. Sometimes it's actually harder trying to do it slower, isn't it, when you're yeah. just used to... Next to it, keep your tension, make sure you've formed a knot. Down and under. Love it, little French knots. There we go. Love them, absolutely love them. I do think, especially the time of year, 
having this month going into lockdown, I think this is going to be really, really lovely to, yeah. to sit and do to a bit of To just get a few phone. things done, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you ever so much. You're today, very Jules. welcome. It's great Thank to see you. Everybody. You're back on the 20th of November, aren't 20th you? 20th of November, yeah. I know you're Rota. <laughs> I know. Back on the 20th. You're in our bubble now, Jules. I know. You're I know. With us. Hubble bubble, toil and trouble and all that. <laughs> I know. Oh, no, we exactly. went and we did that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you Thank then. You. Thank lovely. you. Lovely. Take care, everyone. So, we've got the book. Very, 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 very popular indeed. It's brand new today. I'm so excited for you to be able to get this home. I love these modern designs. I really, really love these contemporary designs. Um, I'm going to go back to, through to the stitch chart just so you can see all of these different. I mean, there's loads. There's 50 different symbols. You've got a little tree, a bone, a feather, crystals, a little um, bird. You've got mini shells. You've got the skull, the antlers, which are gorgeous. You've got um, the ammonite, the really lovely shell. There's so many amazing, amazing uh, designs in here, which I think you're going to be able to incorporate into loads. The anchor, cherries, diamond star, mom, the mini compass, the mini key. Oh, such a great book for anybody who is new to embroidery because, I mean, we've, we've gone through the stitches today with, with Jules. It's all covered in the book. It tells you which one. So maybe don't start with the cupcake. Start with something that's more simple and work your way through. If you're getting somebody else into embroidery, the, the, uh, the kits that we put together as well are absolutely amazing. The, the bundles, the skeins are fab. So these are all of the different designs. There's loads, plus you have all of your iron-on transfer templates in the back of the book. We've put together two different bundles which include some fabrics and skeins. Uh, we'll start with the, the denim coloured linen and it comes with 36 embroidery skeins. Now, as I say, don't get me wrong, this might be something that starts you off, builds up your bundle, but you might then move over to like DMC and start exploring with different threads, absolutely. But what I will say is value for money for how much you're getting here. This is extraordinary. 36 of your embroidery skeins, all gorgeous bright colours, plus you're getting a metre of linen and half a metre of blue chambray. Uh, we also have the colourway that uh, Jules was working with was this one, where you get a metre of your grey linen, half a metre of your chambray and blue, and then you also have your beautiful embroidery skeins, $24.99. If you want the book, it's brand new today. That is separate today. Uh, we've got a huge box of machine embroidery threads. So if you're thinking of doing machine embroidery, then these ones are brilliant. If you love some of the designs and inspired you to get onto your embroidery machine, uh, you get 50. 50 of your embroidery threads, uh, they're all great value for money as well. Look at the, the I can't, I never, I never can open this. Ugh. Um, it's, they're all, uh, hang on, let me try and work this out. It can't be too difficult. There we go. Um, they've all got that beautiful, beautiful sheen, which will stand out amazing for all of your embroidery designs. If you're maybe doing the embroidery design on a denim jacket, if you're doing any embroidery on um, uh, on any of your projects, then these are going to be beautiful. Remember, these are to be used with your machine this time. Uh, £49.99. They all sit in your nice little storage tub. Price per spool is crazy. Very, very low. Remember, on the website, the hoops are there, the clamp is there, the light is there. Any, I mean, have a good search through the website because there's loads of lighting. We've got a few different options of different lamps on there, so have a look. Plus, we've got different books. We've got some beautiful embroidery books that are on the on the website. What was it that you wanted to show? Sorry, Kat. Uh, yeah. If you wanted a different design, this one's called Doodle Stitching Embroidery Art. <laughs> $14.99. Um, these are all stunning, aren't they? Look, you've got some beautiful woodland ones, patterns and variations. Wow, that looks like something Delphine would do. <gasps> oh my word, thread painting. Just embellishing some of the uh, the fabrics you already have. So uh, imagine this as a, a you know a fabric, a printed fabric, but then embellishing over the top of it. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. So if you're inspired. Uh, by, uh, oh, this is nice. If you're inspired, uh, of course, by all of George's work, make the most of all of the books that we have are available on the website. 
We had earlier on a lot of people who are, are, are checking out on the Stripology Ruler. It was back in stock today. The XL Stripology Ruler. Thank you so much for all of your lovely photos, uh, photographs. We've had one from Shilla who's messaged in her photograph. Hello. Oh, my word. That is incredible. Hi, I made this Bargello cook using my Stripology Ruler. Only the Stripology Ruler. It saved me so much time and everything was so accurate, which made the cutting so, so easy. I love it. Absolutely love it. And look at how effective that is. I mean, that looks like it will have spent, you will have spent so much time cutting all of those pieces. I love how they're all sort of intertwined. <gasps> Amazing. Don't forget, if you haven't yet checked out on your XL Stripology Ruler, it's back in stock today. You can check out on that. Uh, now, don't forget, uh, Bex Reed is going to be joining you in the next hour. She's waiting in the wings. We're ready to do the changeover. Yarn Lane is coming up next for an hour. Please make sure if you're watching on the website to jump over to www.yarnlane.com or onto the Yarn Lane Facebook or onto YouTube. Um, or, of course, you can continue to watch us on Freeview and Sky for another hour as we're talking all things knitting and crochet. Tomorrow on Sewing Street, we have Bonfire Bonanza. It's Bonfire Night tomorrow, isn't it? Eight o'clock, think firework fabrics, roaring fires, autumnal hot chocolates. Oh, love it. That's eight o'clock. And of course, the early bird special as well. At nine o'clock, let's get gifting. Perfect time. I mean, we, we didn't plan this. We were, we, were, we were actually thinking about doing a gifting show anyway. So that one is going to be perfect, especially with the announcement that we had over the weekend. So gifting ideas coming up at nine o'clock. Ten o'clock, uh, we've got Living in Loveliness. Kerry! I've not seen Kerry for so long. She's going to be joining me at 10 o'clock. I'm very excited to see her. Kits revisited at 11. We've got some of your favourite kits back in stock. And then a lovely Kerry is going to be back with me again at 12 o'clock tomorrow. Do join me. I know that we're entering into a strange time tomorrow. So make sure you remember we are here with you. We're live every day from 8 o'clock. Bex Reed is going to be joining you. Rebecca's going to be on next with Yarn Lane. I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Do not go anywhere though. Bex is up after this.